Hey, Tommy. Yo. Yo. Hi, David. Hello, good morning. How you doing? Hello. I'm, if we have a, I'm doing well though, thank you, how are you? Good. <laughs> I'm probably gonna re regret suggesting these three hour meetings because it's like, for me it's 11 to two, which completely kills any chance of eating lunch at a reasonable hour. And I'm going to be starving and snippy by the end of it. So. I forget half the people here, or a good portion of the people here, are uh, um, East Coast, or and a lot of them are in the EU too, if I understand it correctly. Um, yeah, fair number. Yeah. Um, so yeah I thought couple. it was seven a.m. Pacific, so it's even. <laughs> 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 I got up at six thirteen, and I was like, oh, in fact, it's at eight. <laughs> See, that's, that's actually one, one of the reasons I picked this time, though, is I figured 8 a.m. isn't too bad for West Coast folks, no. and, and the folks in Europe should be happy, so, yeah. Hey, John. Yeah, in California, you live with the sun, so the sun is getting up around 6.30 right now. Yeah. Hi, Doug and all. Hey, John, and that was Klaus on there, too? Yes, I'm here. Hello. So the real question is, is, is Clemens going to remember? Because I, <laughs> I really wanted to pick on him because he had the most to say about just even the first example. So he better show up. Hey, Scott. Scott, you there? Scott is hiding. Scott, you may be having mic issues because I couldn't hear you when you came off mute there for a sec. Oh, I'm having my issues. <laughs> okay. Uh, da -da -da. So while we're waiting, what I was thinking about doing, see if you guys are okay with this, was I was going to have us jump right into sort of the design discussions and continue our chat on this sort of walkthrough. And then at the top of the hour, I was then going to return to the normal agenda just to cover some of the high level things or not cover high level things, um, normal governance types things for those people who could only make the normal hour and then go back to <clears throat> the deep dive. And then at the top of the next hour, if we have any SDK topics, so I think we have at least one, um, we'll jump over to SDK and then return back to the deep dive. That way people who can only make the normal schedule calls won't feel like they missed out. Does that seem fair? 
Sounds good. Sounds okay. Good. Cool. Oops. What the hell was I can spell? Weak. All right. Three after two. Why don't we go ahead and get started? Oh, there's. I believe Lou's last name is Dang. Hold on a sec. Hey, Lou, you there? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Cool. All right. Why don't I go ahead and get started? Hopefully, other people will join as we go. Um, it's unfortunate Clemens isn't here yet. Oh, hey, Vod. Um, because he had, he had a lot to say on this one. But it seems to me that there really wasn't any objection to us supporting the, uh, what's the phrase we're using for it? The um, aggregation model. And so therefore, being able to filter on things like source, as opposed to it just being something that's sort of outside uh, the, uh, the event, it sounds like that's something that people did want to do. So do you guys agree that that source should just be another filter property that people can filter on? Yes. Okay. But yes. I think Clemens might uh, say no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's why I was really hoping he'd be here because I know he had some opinions about this. Um, but okay. But for now, no one else on the call has any concerns with that, right? Okay, so then um, I guess my overall question for the group is, as I was putting together this example, the, the biggest thing to me was the fact that I chose to make the specification of these properties to be configuration things as opposed to filters. And if you remember correctly, I did that because I wanted um, an implementation of this on GitHub to be as small as possible and require as little work as possible. And as I said, I didn't think that they necessarily use filters per se. I mean, I don't know what they do under the covers, but the fact that they sort of have the user pass them in as individual properties seemed like a natural thing for me to, to model it this way. And so my question for you guys is not, is this the right thing to do? Because I think people can make that choice themselves in terms of how they want to model these things. My question is, should the spec allow this choice? Do you guys have any opinion on that? I'm okay with the freedom. I think it should be implementation choice. So. Okay, thank you. Anybody else want to chime in? Okay, so in that case, um, the, 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 re the result of that to me was in the spec today, we actually don't allow the filter to be optional in terms of the uh, subscription manager, I believe has to support the filter mechanism and in particular, the simple filter dialect or filter type, whatever it's called. Um, but it seems to me if someone chooses to model things this way, I don't think we can force them to support filters at all. In other words, my, met, that my net of this is, I think filters should be optional to support. And therefore, I think we need a way to advertise in the discovery spec whether the subscription manager supports any filtering at all. And in, in particular, be able to advertise that they don't. The exact mechanism by which we do that, I haven't decided yet, but I wanted to see what you guys thought about that decision. I'm okay with both, to be honest, uh, because I, I don't think that because you have the um, basically config uh, solving part of the filter that you should not have filtering, but you can make it optional or not. It, well, <laughs> I'm okay with both. Yeah, yeah that, that, and that was my point, right? I, I, I think I, I was uncomfortable with the idea of forcing my implementation of the GitHub subscription manager to have to support filtering because that, that actually could be a fair amount of work. And I did not want to force people to do that if they didn't want to. Yeah, I agree. I think the filtering is the biggest amount of work in the whole uh, subscription model. Right. Okay. Thank you, Remy. Everybody else who's kind of quiet, any thoughts on that? Any disagreement with the idea of making it optional? For, to be clear, optional for subscription managers to support. 
Okay, not hearing anybody. Were you asking beforehand that uh, optional versus removing? I was, no, no, no I wasn't, no. I, I wasn't proposing to remove the filter at all. I was just saying subscription okay. managers are, do not have to support it. Okay, that's fine. Thank okay. you. Yep. Okay. Um, okay, in that case, before I move on to the next sort of step in my thought process here, is there anything about this one that people want to talk about that I didn't mention that may come as a surprise to you? Well, um, yeah, go ahead. Can we, yeah. I'm, I'm still thinking and trying to digest that. Um, so we said that source is also just another filter is that, or can be filtered upon? I think source, yes. But in other words, source would just be like any other cloud event attribute where if the, if the subscription manager supported filters, you could filter on source, yes. Okay. In general, I like that idea, but I just wonder if we make um, either filters or config, I mean, if we both make both of them more or less optional, how in the end this would work if I have something like an aggregator that passes on subscriptions upstream, there's not much in, the, in them anymore that um, helps routing the uh, subscriptions upstream and the uh, values in config are more or less um, proprietary in the end. Yeah, and I, I apologize. I, I did mention this the first time we look at this document, um, but I, I think what it does is it, it makes the, um, the, the metadata or the discovery spec information more important than ever. Mm -hmm. Right. So the users, so somehow we need to make it perfectly clear in there that for this particular subscription or, or this particular service, here's the config options and, mm -hmm. and, and whether it supports filtering or not. And you have to very clearly understand what the config options are for, whether they're simply to configure things or whether they do some sort of implicit filtering. And I, and yep. I, I, I don't, I think that's the direction we have to go, but I think I kind of agree with, with what I think you're saying, which is, it makes it a little bit awkward and, and not as uh, programmable. You kind of have to have a human involved to understand what's going on, but I don't know what else to do about it, to be honest. It's, it's, it's just the subscription does not contain now a reference to a source or a service anymore, but you, you have the, the config values. And, and I'm wondering if that's still um, possible. I mean, if, if, if that really can then support interoperability. So hold on a minute. Let's go back over here for a sec. I want to make sure I understand what you're saying. Do, 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 do. So I think in discovery, we have this notion of a service, right? Yeah, hold on. And Let me bring we... up the discovery spec okay. just to make sure yeah. we look at the same thing. Do, 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 do. Okay, we got this right here. Okay. So I imagine that for a service, we could describe then those um, uh, config values, those properties. Yes, that's right here. Uh, okay, yeah, exactly, yes. So um, if now in the subscription, I, I could have uh, this relation to a service or a source, then uh, it would be possible for a subscription manager to, to create that relation. But if I don't have that, uh, and it contains these config values, it's, it's getting hard. So Clemens, I'm glad you, you joined us. Uh, let me, let's just back up a second here. So Clemens, I know you were concerned about the whole aspect of the source related to this stuff right here. Mm -hmm. and, and before you joined, we were talking about not whether this is the right choice or not, meaning I chose to model the, um, the specification of these properties as a config thing as opposed to a filter. And mm -hmm. so the question wasn't whether that was the right model, but whether it's an allowable model per the spec. And no one disagreed that it should be allowable, right? Um, because someone may choose to not really want to support filters at all. They may mm -hmm. just want to say, hey, here are my, here are some interesting attributes and I'm going to use that to, set, to know what events to send you. But they don't necessarily think of it as a filter per se. So there were sort of two decisions we made. One was, this is legal per the spec, whether it's preferred or not, different discussion, but it's legal. Okay. And the other decision was that would imply then that filtering support by the subscription manager should be optional because today in the spec, it, it doesn't 
come right out and say it, but I think it's strongly implied that the subscription manager has to support at least the simple filtering dialect. Mm -hmm. And we kind of agreed that no, we should make that optional because filtering is could be potentially very expensive for somebody and they may not want to support that. Any okay. comments on that? Uh, yes, I can see that I, I on config whether config is 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 how we want to go and set context the con context for the subscription is something that I'm that I continue to be on the fence on the fence for so uh, that the config here was for um in my mind for configuring that context but not for identifying it meaning um with config i would i would tell a subscription source that i want to have a a notification every minute and so the 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 the, the, the notification interval would be that's something i would set here but identifying that um, um, identifying that source is something that I would prefer to do elsewhere. Yeah, I understand your desire, but that's not quite the same thing as whether the spec tries to put language in there that outright bans it. Right? Yeah, for, but for semantic clarity, um, I, I think, I think we need to have a, we have, need to have a way to identify what what to correlate to the source and to then configure what that source is ought to do in order to give you events. I think those things are different, but but I would like for the source um, that we are encoding in events to be somewhat correlated in some way to how we subscribe because ultimately we are subscribing to events from the source and expressing that through the config seems a little odd. Understood. And I understand that it's odd, but I still go back to, oh, let me let, go ahead, your hands up. Uh, it's just, I don't know, Clement, you always refer to the source, like if it was the only, Thing that matters while for me when I consume events I will say that the only thing that I really care is the type of event yeah but that, that that's that's true if you if you're not dealing with multiple sources in the same in the same context but my, my vision is like when I take the github uh, sample is like as a, an external company I will care when someone push on our repository I don't care from which source because it's already coming from GitHub. So whatever the source attribute is, I was not expecting to filter on that and just say, okay, like it's a, because the event type, I think, but maybe I'm wrong. If I remember correctly, I would have defined like a, a push on a repository, like a com.github.repository.push as the event type. No. And if, Sorry. So, so, but yeah. So, you're, I think you're 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 mapping too much onto the uh, onto the event type. The event type is not scoped to is typically not scoped to a particular resource. The the event type is typically generic, and then you get the extra scoping from the source. So, there is a there's one type that that tells you that the file has changed. It is. So I'll, I'll, I'll refer to something that exists in our world and that is uh, microsoft.storage.blockcreated. That is one type that exists for all the, all the, 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 um, the storage change events in all of Azure and it's being raised a million times a second. So, so to, to make sense out of that event, you need to have some scoping and the scoping is being, pro, is being provided by the source and by the subject. Okay, isn't a choice of implementation or you think that should be like basic implementation that everyone should follow exactly the same path? For me, it wasn't clear reading the specification, I guess. 
So, so our, our the event types are fairly are are described as being well the, the the specific type of events. I don't think they're they're referred to as being something that gives you scoping for um, for an object. That would be also overly specific because then you would literally have to go and create a new type for every storage account that you want to go and deal with or for every repository that you want to go and deal with. And so that makes generic applications a bit diff difficult. Okay. So Clemens, I feel a little bit like we might be going in circles. Um, yeah, so, but, but, but that's, so there's <laughs> that, there's nothing wrong. So I, 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 don't, I don't have any, I don't oppose using config here. It's just that I'm, I wonder how we, what we need to solve is how this, what the scoping is and how the scope result, uh, um, ref, relates to where the event comes from. So when we go back to the event, the event has two elements that, that provide scoping. One is the source and the second is the subject. And the source tells you clearly where that event comes from. So my expectation is that we have some way of correlating the subscription manager to what that source is, either by having a parameter that tells the subscription manager, hey, help me subscribing events from the source, or by having the source itself expose the subscription API. On the first option you mentioned there, are you, it, it sounds like you're almost, how do I say this? I'm not sure whether you're suggesting that source should be some sort of top level thing here or whether we just need to make sure people understand they can use source inside of filters. Yeah, so I, I think I think the, the source is a top level thing here for subscription managers, which can which have a scope that spans very many different sources. And then it could also be implied or be null if you're speaking about the subscription manager itself effectively about its own scope. So just just to make that concrete. Um, and, and I'm going to stick to that to that to the blob account because the, the storage the storage thing in blob created is pretty clear. Um, I am I'm actually trying to model this right now in my interop coding. I just got stuck this week, and so I couldn't couldn't make as proper, much progress as I wanted to. But I'm I'm just toying now with two approaches. One is to create a subscriptions endpoint literally underneath the the blob account or actually underneath the container so that you have this the long uri that identifies the blob container and then slash subscriptions so you can go and walk up there and go and and subscribe and then that the the, the source is implied or and this is something and that's something we do today is you walk up to event grid and then on the event grid, you do a you do a um, a subscri subscribe gesture, and then a parameter into that subscribe gesture is the is the the um, the address of the thing that you want to subscribe on, which means that is the the um, um, the address of that of that block container, which is a very long URI. Um, the upside of the latter approach is that you can go and generically have one thing that's identifiable and has an endpoint and you talk to it and then you pass it as a parameter. The upside of the first approach, which means you're putting that endpoint right onto the object, is that discoverability is better. Like, if you're looking at the blob account and its API, then putting a subscription endpoint there makes it obvious that there is an operation for how you can get to events from that thing versus having a subscription manager that lives somewhere else where the, you then have to go and, and literally know about the the relationship between the two that's the that's the tension between those two models okay class your hands up yeah so um i understand that example for the uh blob store but 
that's that's I think Clemens, you're sometimes also um, using examples from IoT. So yes. how would that work if a sensor is a source and you have hundreds of them? Would you then have to create a subscription per sensor? You would um ha, hey, so good that that's a great question. Um you would you would really you would literally subscribe you would probably subscribe to the stream um someone needs to go and consolidate those events for you if you want to have events from 300 individual devices out of 900 you probably want to go and turn those subscriptions on or off individually or you care about the entirety of those, and then and then we're talking about individual subscriptions, which means you have an, you have an, a subscription manager, and the subscription manager you pass the 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 the, um, the name of that device, the the URI of that device, the identifier, to the subscription manager as a parameter in that case, and then you are directing events from that device into your direction. Um, if you are interested in events from all of those devices, then you might be subscribing to an aggregator, which is doing that job for you already in an, in, in an actual system. Um, I, yes, so if you have 900 devices, and you want to have, have events from 300 of them, um, you have to have a place. So either you have to have a place that manages all those, all those relationships for you. That means that you are only interested in 300, um, or you have a, um, um, uh, you individually, you have individual subscriptions on them. But I don't think, I don't think you get around, you get around having either subscribing to an aggregator and then getting alerts that are derivatives of that stream, but that no, no longer means you're subscribing to devices, you're actually subscribing to alerts that are produced out of the aggregation. Um, or that you are um, really going to, you know, wherever those those uh, uh, those events land in your infrastructure, and then individually being interested in in that device or that device and that device. That means you have literally the subscription per device. Except you could, you could also aggregate, you know, propagate up the subscriptions from the aggregator. Uh, Right, so like if you try to apply yeah, the yeah, intent yeah. of uh, producing events, filtering events out as far up the producer chain as possible, you could have an aggregator that accepts these kind of wildcard events. It understands the things that are connected to it, and it can propagate subscriptions up as uh, you know the, the filters become loosened. That's that's a great optimization. Right, yeah, this is a, that's a detail that can be hidden from the uh, initial subscription request, right? Yes. So, so if you really, if we, if we are going down the the, so so what you're ex what you're saying is um, something that I've heard a lot so far, kind of in theory, but I haven't seen much yet. Um, and that is, for instance, this whole notion of five G four deployed in the network smart routers that um, can deal with application level constructs so that you could go and, and say, um, you know, I know this device is attached to this 5G um, node. And so therefore I'm gonna go and, and subscribe through that intermediary to events from that device. And then you have some, you can go and optimize you know, how, how you go and do the, the distribution of the flow and the filtering and all those things. I mean, there's, lots of future potential there, um, but I just don't see that yet. So I'm trying to figure out where we go with this, Clemens, because- oh, I, I, think, I think source is a parameter here. But, but if, we, if we, okay, if, I think what you're suggesting is this, right? Mm -hmm. Now, if we do that, I'm not sure what that means, because it, if, if you only have a single source behind this event stream, Okay, and it's not that, that makes sense, but if you if you are an aggregator, what does it mean to fill this in? 
if you're an aggregator and you're raising events, then you are raising aggregates, which means you're raising your own. Well, no. Um, well, if you're if no, you're more you like a pastor, you're not. not. You can just proxy because then you can uh, have a different security context. And if you interrupt uh, ability with different company, basically when I connect to GitHub, I need to have my uh, GitHub tokens. While basically when I um, forward it to my own customer, I want them to have, I don't know, an, another company token that is different from the GitHub token. So, and I don't want to rework everything. It's like, so I, I, yeah, but I see, I guess I just, I'm just confused, Clemens, because I, I think in the, what I want to call the simple case, where you have a single source behind the subscription manager, and the then source you, of value is going to be the yeah. same for all events, I understand that use case. Then you leave that off, that, because then you don't need this. We have two cases. We have one, we have one where the subscription API is on the source. In that case, that parameter, you can omit that because it's null. Right. You're talking to the thing itself. Right. So then we don't need that. But if if this acts as a as an intermediate as an intermediary, which means it is a subscription manager which looks down at a multiplex stream of stuff, and you are interested in in the events from a particular source, then you would go and specify that. Right, and that's when I start getting confused because at that point I'm wondering because I think we're all in agreement <clears throat> that. The, that the source value in this stream of events coming from this one subscription, in some cases may be the same value every single time, or in something that's more like an aggregation case, it actually could mm -hmm. change its value over time depending on who actually generated the event. So it seems to me you need to be able to support both a static value and a changing value. And at that right. point, I'm wondering why isn't that just a property inside the filter? Because, because you may want because, to do because it's, because, it's, because, because the source here actually does work. It activates something. Um, you, it, if you put it in a filter, then you are assuming that the events from that from that source are already coming. But you also need to keep track of what you are interested in, so that you can tell uh, if you need to th the source, "Hey, start giving me events." Because in in because in our um, uh, so for instance in event grid, if all the storage accounts that exist in Azure for with all the containers, and we're talking about you know trillions of objects, if every single one of them were throwing events up into our system um, without having been having been asked to go and start doing that then the system would just be swamped in, I don't know how many trillions of events every second, um, just because every object is starting to throw, throw events up. So that is far, rather impractical. So, so we, need to, we need to keep track of, of, is there actually interest in events from that source so we can go and activate the event emission? And when the, when the interest goes away, when the subscription is, is being deleted and the last subscription effectively for that particular object is gone, then uh, we also stop stop emitting those events again. So that's the that, so 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 it's not just a filter because the filter assumes that the events are already coming. You're just simply are you and you're simply uh, picking something out. But making the source explicit here also gives you a way to keep track of what you have um, 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 of what you have subscribed to. Okay, that it's helps me. Maybe that, that okay. semantic ahead, is Eric. actually implied. Yeah, excuse me? It's not clear to me that that semantic is actually implied. So a filter could be proactively applied. It seems to me that it doesn't require that, it doesn't require that the events are showing up um, in your environment or to, or actually being delivered. You could proactively push the filter out to a series of sources that you're aggregating from. But doesn't filter doesn't filter just imply that it's constraining? Uh, like, certainly. Like, now, so, the the constraining the question is, I, I think there's multiple times at which you can do the constraining. So uh, 
you, the, the aggregator can know whether a certain source can do constraining uh, in real time. But also um, there's some like, you know, take your, your uh, blob storage example. Mm -hmm. You know, maybe I would think that the default event or the default case, if I don't supply a, a blob that I want to be my source is that I would get all public uh, potentially and uh, although you could maybe make that more of an opt-in, but anyway, uh, that I would get all events in my uh, subscription scope, all of the things that I privately have access to. All events would come to me if I don't supply any filter. That's what I would expect. I wouldn't expect to have to explicitly declare this one and this one and this one and this one, everything I have. Oh, by the way, those are dynamically created sometimes, so therefore I'm going to be missing out. Yeah, um, yeah, and and, so, and my and my perspective is is I actually want you to go and opt in because I I want to avoid that extra traffic. I completely appreciate that you do. Uh, <laughs> I think that you could uh, you could manage that internally. Uh, I mean, it, there's nothing to say that the node that you're you, you're issuing the subscription to has to be the node that performs the delivery. Even the same system, right? I mean, nodes. No, it, and it's servers, practically. But, it's practically also not in our in our case. Right. Yeah. It's, it's you're just not going to be able to do that. There's there's too much, and it, and it would cause uh, architectural problems um, and you know, choke off the flow. Yes. Um, but. So you're going to have a more complicated uh, kind of implementation behind the scenes. It's going to be uh, the, the subscription API is going to facilitate uh, kind of propagating, knowing the details of all of the sources that uh, could potentially produce the events that you're uh, that are being subscribed to, and pushing this subscription uh, to those uh, places. So you're saying that the so I shall infer the candidates um, who might who might be uh, who might be requested to go and emit events from the filter. I I think that that's a potential need, particularly for your advanced case. What do I do if you tell me if the filter is simply saying true everything? Well, that person, that that whatever uh, endpoint is uh, configured is going to be inundated, but it might be a valid thing. Maybe what I want to do is uh, do something like archive everything, archive all activity in my account, some for some kind of an auditing purpose. But, okay, so great. So how do we how do we specify your account? Well, as the uh, subscription provider, you, I, I would hope you would require me to identify myself and that provides a security context. That's why I was talking earlier about the public, publicly available things. And then also uh, what I, as uh, with the security context I bring am allowed. But the security context is, so when I go to the security context, um, so when I log into the Azure portal, I have, um, I don't know, 40 different subscriptions that I have access to. Yeah. Um, and each subscription is obviously a, a, a separate Azure tenant, um, which means if I- It seems like secure... in that context, it would be totally reasonable to filter on subscription. Yeah, but then, then already, so my security context is not sufficient. That's what I'm saying. Which means, which means I need uh, to have it's, some... it's sufficient to what is uh, accessible to the subscriber. Now, as a subscriber and, and as an implementer of the subscription API, you might want to require subscription as a filter. You might want to require sources of filter. There, okay. You know, so that would be part of your contract with your uh, particular uh, users is that the semantics of your implementation requires these filters. And if you don't supply them, they get back an error during the subscription. How does that then, how does that, okay. So, so if we don't want to provide any scoping whatsoever in the subscriptions gesture, um, 
how do I know that a sort that a an event that I'm getting has been delivered by based on a particular subscription? Like, how do we I find out cause and effect? Yeah, you're talking about basically like some sort of subscription ID kind of thing that has to flow along with every single event. Yeah, I mean, if if I if I if I have an if I have a subscription API which is clearly associated with the source, then I know um, when I get an event and the source is filled out where that came from. So if I have a subscription and I do this on a particular Bob container, then uh, and I get get an event that I know that I have um, um, the um, um, where, where that came from. I can also I can also make sure that the combination of destination um, and so if I do push delivery that the destination of source and target is unique within the system so I don't don't deliver double. So so I think we need let's go to the queue because I know some people have been waiting. So Scott then Remy and then I'll go. Uh, Scott, you're first. So I'm sorry I should have brought this up much earlier, but. Uh, I know we're talking about this uh, imperative API, but like uh, anyone have any hearts to throw the entire thing out and kind of move to a resource model? Can you elaborate on what that means? Can, what if we described instead of this, uh, the current API that we've been kind of working on, uh, what if it was declarative, right? Like kind of Kubernetes resource based doesn't mean that it has to be in Kubernetes, but the thing that would uh, implement the API would speak similar API to what uh, Kubernetes does. But, but we need we still need to have a we still need to have a wire a wire protocol. Yeah, it's HTTP REST. I mean, this is HTTP REST. Yeah, but it's not. It's a very imperative API. And if we go this direction, there's always going to have to be this adapter level, layer where clouds will have to c consume this uh, imperative API and then translate it into some declarative API and then yeah. translate it back to imperative. Yeah, but my, my, world, my world is very far away from the declarative API world. Yeah, but that's where the future of APIs are going. Well, that's, that's, that, that's, that, that, that might be true in, in, in your bubble. It's not true in my bubble. <laughs> I guess, I guess I, I'm not sure I understand the difference, to be honest. It seems to me in both worlds, you still have to specify the same information that we're talking about here, don't we, Scott? Well, it, it solves this problem of, do I have to specify the source or not? Because in the declarative model, it could be understood that the source gets, you know, uh, re gets resulted in the status or that there's right. some mechanism that's constantly updating based on other information that's available to it. But you still have relationships. I mean, ultimately, the declarative model is like if I look at Kubernetes, uh, that is a hierarchical or um, a relation a relational model. It's ultimately what what Kubernetes gives you. It gives you a database that's describing all of your assets. But you also get the reconciliation and the feedback. That uh, yeah, but then then. Um, we still need to go and establish. We still need to establish a subscription that will stably deliver events to you somehow. And um, how do we establish that? Right. I mean, the, I subscription, the subscription. The, the then stable part is the, the stable part's the piece that's in question, right? Like maybe the the value prop is as I add new buckets to my very very op wide open subscription, I also get those new bu uh, bucket events because that's what I subscribe to. But that's just a scope, right? You have a scope and at that scope, you can still, if you, you are getting extra events, if you're adding extra stuff underneath it, but that's fine. Like if you, if you, if it, if I go back to the, to the storage account, if you subscribe at the container level and you add extra directories and inside those directories, you add files, you also get, get events for those files. The, yes. Okay, I said my piece. Well, Scott, it may be useful if maybe you can write up an example and, and explain how things would change. Because like I said, I, I personally don't understand how it changes anything. 
because even in Knative, when you set up a subscription or an event source, sorry, um, or, or something like a broker, right, where it has filters and stuff like that, it, it, it looks the same to me as this. So I'm not sure I understand the difference. So I'd love to see an example of how, the, how our world would change differently or change radically if we, be, if we turned into a de declarative model. Because to me, this okay. is declarative. Uh, uh, okay. <laughs> but maybe I'm confused. It wouldn't be the first time. <laughs> okay. Uh, Remy, your hands up. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> based on what Clement said and what you just updated on the document, I do agree with you. It, it seems that the source is a configuration value in the scope of Asia, but it should not be uh, like for uh, enforced by the protocol. So I, I really like what you just uh, updated. I guess it was your point, but uh, I'll let you speak after. <laughs> you're trying to you're trying to steal my thunder. Yeah, actually, exactly. what, I was, what I was going to say was thank you, Clemens, very much for your for your description before because that really helped me solidify in terms of what you're thinking. It just it was eluding me for some reason, and that now I have some clarity. And that's why I, I put it down here because I realized that when you were talking about needing a source as a first class thing because you need to know which thing to turn on the events or go you know which thing to go talk to to turn on the events, I just re I realized that's exactly what these two things are doing in essence, right? Mm -hmm. They are describing the source. It's just not calling it source, right? Mm -hmm. um, and that, that's why I moved it down to here because I've realized that you may or may not want to do that. And it, it does become sort of a configuration option kind of thing. Um, now, whether it's top level or in here, we can, dis we can discuss that. But the one thing about this that I thought was interesting was later on during my ramblings at the very, very end, I, I thought, okay, if someone does support filtering, they could have technically expressed the entire subscription this way, right? Where the owner and repo, which are basically the source, are part mm -hmm. of the filter dialects. And I think this may be what Eric was alluding to, which is it's the subscription manager's job to look at this and say, oh, you know what? I'm gonna have to extract this information and go talk to this particular source and tell him to go turn on his event stream. I think that's what Eric was saying or part mm -hmm. of what Eric was saying. And is that, is that right, Eric? Yeah, that's about right. Okay. And if that's true, I do think that is a completely valid choice, but I'm not sure I want to force that on everybody either because that's also a very expensive choice, right? <laughs> um, especially if, if you're living in, I think, Clemens, your world, which is filtering is simply a filter and nothing yeah. more, right? Filter for, me, filter for me is I have, a, I have an event and I'm making a decision of whether I want to go deliver it. Exactly, right. Um, and I'm not necessarily sure where I'm going with this other than I'm getting a little more clarity now. And that's why I think if I was to sort of try to summarize where I think my head is going is that source should be a config thing, um, but it, it should be optional. And I think the discovery metadata for this particular subscription manager needs to advertise whether he needs or requires source. Let me pause there. and. Or she. I'm sorry, say it again. Or she. I'm oh, sorry. <laughs> it. Sorry. I, I, I do have a, a get out of jail free card because the only the only female on our call is Ginger is perfectly okay with it. So anyway. Um, uh, correlation and causation, Doug. I know, I know. Anyway. <laughs> Both <laughs> habits die hard. Anyway, think about that for a minute, Clemens. Always keep going to the queue. Um, and well, your hands up next. Yeah, um, you kind of uh, took a step at the point I was making. I plus one on the resource model idea because I think eventually what we have to think about is the the model of producers, sources, uh, types, events, and so on, and whether or not we call that config or make them top level uh, entities in this subscription. I, I don't think it makes a difference. I am hesitating on the filters because that could. Um, include a nasty language and um, could make it really difficult to identify the source. But if a source is identified, and I mean explicitly, um, I'm I'm good with this, and I, I see where Clemens, where you're going. But again, wh where do I have when I have aggregators where sources go on and off even during my subscription? Maybe I don't 
want to have that mandatory. So I, I don't think this should be mandatory. And another thing why this shouldn't be mandatory is that currently the discovery has no mention of source. I'm not sure if in some people's heads the service is equivalent to a source, but I think it represents uh, something that can uh, front several sources, much like a producer can um, take over the event generation for a couple of sources and could also be spread in a distributed system where multiple producers produce the same source. So with this difficult constellation, I think um, it for somebody discovering uh, a service that provides the events that he or she is interested in, it wouldn't be possible to identify a source to put in the subscription. So currently that link is missing between the two. Yeah, the absence of it in discovery doesn't mean that it shouldn't be there. When you say it's absence of discovery, where do you think source should show up here? We have source there as a source uh, template or pattern. I keep forgetting what its name mm -hmm. yes. is. Oh, wait a minute. Hold on. I think I'm in the wrong branch. Yeah. Oh, are you still in the in the bad one? Yeah. Don't, that's don't, not supposed don't. to exist. Do, do, yeah, yeah. We got a new, we got a PR for that. Don't worry about that. <laughs> <laughs> where is source? It's, in uh, the, it's maybe in not in the text. example. Oh, in yeah. OK. There we go. OK, you're right. OK, we just want to, OK. And it's at the same level as data schema. So, OK, so it would be, it's in here then, it's at this level. Yeah. OK. So it basically describes, this describes a service that is representing a, a number of sources that you can go and then subscribe from. Okay, so that, go, I'm sorry, go ahead. But it's not mandatory. So I, I wouldn't know how, so point being is um, there should at least be the any source or star field wildcard to subscribe to sources. Well, you could also leave it off, Which, I think is what Clemens was saying, right? So yeah. This would be optional. Yeah, uh, yeah it's, it's, it's definitely optional. Like, so if you, if you have, if you, if, if this is your only choice, if, if the thing you are interacting with is the thing is actually that's emitting the events, then the source is implied. It is the source, which means you don't need to go and specify it. So this is really only if the subscription manager is acting on behalf of, of sources that are not itself, then you would have to go and refer or refer to the sources somehow. So, okay, so Klaus, I think you're next in the queue. Yeah. Oh, sorry, oh, uh, go ahead. I was wondering uh, exactly also if it should be the service instead, because for discovery, we said that source might be very fine grained, might be hard to even list all sources. So always require either a full match or leave it out. Seems a bit, um, I don't know. I, I would also like to have something like wildcards, for example. I, I might have a huge number of sources, but I, I know the naming scheme, for example, in the path segment of the URI or something. So I could imagine to, to select a certain amount of sources. With, so, so if you do this, what is, the, what is the way how you unsubscribe? I thought that this subscription here, I, I get an ID for my subscription. Well, ID, so yes. Yeah. It's, Because there's a delete. Well, I don't have it. There. Um, and in the aggregator case, you, if you update that subscription, it would, it, an implementation could possibly cascade, deleting certain subscriptions that it created, that no longer apply because the subscription's been updated to be more specific. Okay. So, okay, Eric, I think your hand's up next. Yeah, thank you. Um, as I didn't come into this call kind of having made this distinction, but um, I, I, and that'll end up being relevant in a second, but I, I was kind of uh, a little opposed to what you did in config, uh, Doug, because 
uh, what I was seeing there seems to belong more in filters as far as I'm concerned. And then there would be a very small translation into uh, those as, um, you know, whatever the GitHub API uh, uses them for. So it would be still very, very low effort. Um, the same way that they're going to have to pull out this JSON and do the right thing with it, right? But um, one of the things I didn't come into the call with was this notion of both a static and dynamic uh, layer of, of kind of the application of uh, what events I'm selecting for. And um, to be a little more specific about that, there, there are, uh, we are trying to describe an API that is going to declare the correct um, behavior uh, across uh, a whole set of uh, scenarios. And um, a lot of them, we won't, we won't know their implement. We can't know their implementation. And uh, in fact, some of the filters are going to be a comp, sorry, this is the big thing. They're static and, and dynamic. And some of those parts of those filters are going to be static. And that's going to have to be weaned out of a uh, declaration. And that can be sent for configuration. And then another piece is going to have to actually look at the things. So, you know, for example, if everything's running through some kind of an event queue um, or, you know, Kafka or whatever, um, you can know what messages are routed into that event queue. But within that subset, you're going to have to, if only a subset of the events are being requested or filtered to, then you're going to have to sit there and pro look at everyone to pick out the right ones. And uh, so this is what I mean about kind of the, the static versus um, the dynamic is that you're going to have to uh, establish some uh, listener to that queue that's going to consume those messages. And that there's a active listening and relationship there is the static part of that. Well, the dynamic would be then the filtering over the events coming through that. You. That's right. right. Anyway, that, that's that's the piece. It seemed like it might be useful with this conversation. That you, you, you're that's reflects my that reflects my thoughts. Like there is a there is a filters are effectively the way how you how you settle out which which of the events that are coming by you really want. But then there is this the acquisition of those events somehow needs to have some way of scoping um and that's and that's what i that's what i was missing yeah i like the way you phrase it eric thank you um but it, so let me back up though I, actually first manuel is your hand up is that old or is that new sorry that's old okay that's what i thought okay so eric as you start off the conversation by saying you were uncomfortable at first with what i wrote here but at, by the end are you actually okay with that because of the new I, because of what Clemens has been pushing pushing us on, which is he needs a way to get that, in essence, static data to know exactly which thing to turn on the events for. So are you I okay mean, with this now? To me, I think that both config and uh, filters are gonna be pretty specific to whoever, whatever subscription API you're speaking to. So uh, exactly how each implementer wants to make that choice. Um, making static things, I, Making static things go into config and uh, the dynamic ones go into filters, that, that seems like a right, reasonable way for that to happen. Um, I definitely have been thinking a little differently about it previously, but it seems reasonable enough. I'm, I'm far more okay with it than I was. Okay. But, yes. but I had to open my mind a little more to, to be that way. Right, and, and, I, and I actually really like the, the terminology you're using there of static versus dynamic, because I think that aligns well with, I think, the PR we approved last week, which is this three-step um, um, model we have, which is you create the event, then you filter the event, then you send the event. And if we be a little more explicit about it and say, you know, filters are meant strictly for filtering a stream. You already have a list of events flowing through it, and therefore just reducing that down, they're not necessarily for controlling which events generated per se, um, I think that might help add some clarity. But at the same time, I think a, a particular subscription manager could choose, could, um, could still choose to say, you know what, I'm still going to do everything as a filter. Because the way I chose to implement everything under the covers, it is a filter. And so when you subscribe to one version of GitHub, it may look like this, but another version of GitHub may actually look like this. 
if they choose to. And I think we need to allow for both. But I think the, the, the metadata for the discovery service just needs to be very clear about what they're expecting. So for example, the metadata for this, this one may not have any config options at all in, in this section. Whereas the normal GitHub one may, it may mention uh, you know, repo owner or may call it source, it's up to it. But you, I think what you're what you're doing here is you are if you talk about if we, we stick with GitHub, right? Mm -hmm. You're moving a you're effectively shifting a lever over the graph that is that is is GitHub, right? Um, and that is it in 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 if we look at this at this here, right? You are placing the subscription at the root of GitHub. And I'm now filtering everything down to the exact events that you have, but everything in GitHub is a candidate. That is, that is. The, the, I'll give you an. I'll give you a, an, an example in um, in a parallel example in Broker World, right? That is how MQTT works. In MQTT, you have a broker that has a wide open space, and you just jam all the events into it, and then you create a a, a, a subscription. And the subscription can basically pick from from the root, or it can go and pick into any depth of the topic hierarchy. But but you only it's it's only acts as a filter, right? The the topic name, the topic prefix actually in the MQTT is a pure filter condition. Versus um, a, um, a a topic in MQ, where you are creating a channel for messages that you're sending through that particular channel. And then you can go and create a subscription on that topic, which will then go and allow you to go and filter all the messages that are coming into that topic, but none of the messages that are going into a different topic, right? That's the, so, so there's, this, there's this, this wide open space where you have this giant, this giant space where all the events exist and you can go and just filter into them. Or you have this very explicit split between a topic, which means a, a channel through which which events flow, onto which you can then subscribe and then and then filter filter further things down, which is a concept that doesn't exist in MQTT. I think that's that exact split here. Co yeah, come yeah. in in uh, um, in in broker terms. Yeah, but I, I'm not I'm not sure whether you're agreeing or disagreeing with what I was saying. I'm, I, I'm, I'm saying yes, there is, there, I think there is a, um, um, I think this this can exist and the other one are exist, but I think those are the same model. It's just, it's just here in this picture, you are choosing to simply subscribe at the root of whatever scope that subscription manager has. And in the other example, you are subscribing to a subset of candidate events which are then being filtered down. Right, and, I, and, I, and what I'm suggesting is that we need to technically support both. We don't mm -hmm. necessarily need to do anything special to make it happen. We just don't need to, we just need to make sure we don't put anything in the spec that would preclude somebody from defining a GitHub type environment that takes a filter expression that looks like this. Yes. Okay. I, I, I also think that GitHub would not allow you to do that, but, but yeah. Yeah, but that's, but that's because they chose to implement it because it's very possible for, for all we know, actually GitHub may actually generate an event for every single repo, for every single thing. And they actually do it, do everything through filters for all we know. We just mm -hmm. don't know, but that's, a, yeah. But it, it, yeah. Okay. And um, okay, so for, the, for those folks who are joining the call, let's actually, let's wait another two minutes before I get into this since we normally wait till three after anyway. So back to this, um, Clemens, you, you were originally talking about sources being some top level thing, but what do you think about it being under config since that's it's sort of controlling which thing or how events are being generated? Um, the, the only reason why I'm a little hesitant for that to be under config is that config was, I thought of config as a very generic bucket of, of um, key values that you would hand to a, um, to the application to 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 the thing, and uh, it you would then configure it. So this for me was I had in my mind that that's just proprietary per subscri subscription manager data, 
that would then kind of like, if you have a timer, you can go and configure the timer, like goes to configure those things. But because source is a concept that is first class in cloud events, um, I was thinking that, that 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 would be also something that just doesn't sit side by side with all the that config stuff, but with um, it is also first class in in the subscription. That's that's the distinction. Ultimately, I think of this as a more or less as a naming decision decision. And as long as there is a well defined place for it, um, I'm 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 okay either way. I just thought of the config bucket as something that is more free form without anything specific being defined in that um uh in in it okay oh uh, yeah i guess we could we can i guess noodle on the exact location later but i was assuming if it was under here we would say there there's a list of predefined ones that are common and and they would look a lot like the cloud events one and so i guess actually look, let, let, let's just pause there for a sec because i know we got people joining uh, new um what we decided to do was to take the top of the hour to go back and exit for a minute the deep dive discussions and talk about sort of the governance type thing. That way people who can only stay for this one hour, the normal hour, will miss out on that part of the discussions. And then we'll jump back to the normal deep dive discussions. Is that okay with everybody? All right, so um, anything from the community people wanna bring up that's not on the agenda? Okay. Um, EU, so we have uh, coming up fast, but keep in mind, Remy's volunteer to talk. If somebody else would like to talk, please let me know. We have until the seventh to let that, to let them know. Uh, we do have an SDK call technically after this one. We're going to do the exact same thing for that call at the very at the top of the next hour. We'll switch over there. We do have one topic as of right now, but when that's done, we'll switch back to the deep dive of, of the design discussion. Um, Discovery interrupt. I don't think there's anything much to mention from last week, unless someone else who was on the call can think of anything. Okay, not hearing anything. Uh, Tiamor, anything you want to mention from workflow? I'm uh, just real quick going through issues right now. The only thing that's, that we're kind of working on is looping uh, structures for the language. So that's it. Okay, any questions for him? All right, cool. Thank you. Um, just a heads up if you're interested in the discussion about the Linux Foundation mentorship or the Google Summer of Code thing, that is, as of right now, I believe the only topic in the SDK call. So if you're interested in that, stay on for the SDK call at the top of the next hour. Okay, now let's quickly see if we can get through these PRs to get back to the other exciting topic of the deep dive. All right, um, okay, this was Manuel's. Manuel, you wanna just quickly refresh everybody's memory about this one? Um, I have to fully refresh my own memory on that. So. There we go. So consume with the other discussion. If you want, we can look at this very quickly. Yeah, let's look at the issue. I think there I typed go. it down. Oh yeah, so um, spec versions said to be a list of strings, but uh, actually uh, the specification was using an object. Um, so that needs to be fixed. Uh, then subscription dialects, um, the description or the, the type has a typo, it's values, and this has to be fixed, but also uh, in other occasions, list is used, and it's not a URI ref list of URI references, but strings, so it should say list of string values. Um, then to align it with the specification, the fields ID, epoch, and subscription dialect were missing altogether. And the um, there is one more complicated thing that is the, uh, spec currently lists all the parameters and then we have uh, one subtype so to say a sub object um, that is called types and the fields of that object are listed alongside uh, the top level parameters in the spec so this should be separated in the spec markdown also i um, i would switch the name type to event type to make the um, schema more clear of what this object is uh, as type it's, uh, kind of confusing. So these are the changes. Okay. Um, not a huge list, but anybody have any questions, concerns, comments? Okay. Any objection to approving? Excellent. All right, cool. Thank you, Manuel. I think this one might be yours too. Hold on a sec. 
close these. Yeah. <clears throat> That's one. Okay, yeah, there were parameters in the request body that, uh, no, sorry, not request body, for operations uh, in OpenAPI spec uh, that appeared on the path of the HTTP request. And those parameters cannot be omitted in any case. So uh, there needs to be a required true as mandated by the OpenAPI spec. So these are the two occasions uh, you can see here. And then also there was, um, what's the other one? I think the any of I reverted. So if that's the only change left, then yeah. yes. Okay. Any questions or comments on this? Okay, any objection to approving? Cool. All right, this one, I believe, yeah, Jem and Clemens both noticed that the 101 branch actually had a couple of errors in it. First of all, all the specs still had this section that said it's a working draft. So I went through and removed all those. Um, I also removed all of the uh, work in progress specs, meaning the discovery, subscription, schema registry, those kind of things. Um, the only other thing, where is it? Yeah, that's working draft. Okay. Um, I did decide to keep the protobuf spec, spec in there because that's not as much a work in progress. It's, it's kind of done, but I did change it to say it's a release candidate and I left it in the 101 branch. I wasn't sure which way people would want to go on that, but I think everything else is what I already said. Remove the newer specs and change and remove the work and draft stuff. Does anybody have an opinion on this one? Think I went, chose the wrong direction to go on this? Okay. Any objection then to approving and changing the 101 branch? All right, cool, thank you. Oops. All right, um, this one. Let me just see where we are. Tell you what, let's, let's ignore this one because I'm still going back and forth with this gentleman and I don't want to merge it in case he actually wants to make more changes. So let's, let's skip that one. It's not, or it's not urgent. Um, okay, Slinky, would you like to talk about your document that you put together? Hello. There we go. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's a document pretty much similar to the other one with the difference that it's, it's a SQL-like language. So no, you choose the one. Yeah, hold on. Where, where is it? Is this the latest one? Uh, this is the uh, the C like. This is the C like. Oh, okay. Hold on. Where's the URL to? Uh, it's it's in the it's in the issue. Is it? Hold on. Uh, the issue. The issue. Hold on. Do, 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 do. Um, oh, here we go. And SQL, yeah, here we SQL go. Element. Yeah, excellent. <clears throat> and then we move that over here, so they're next to each other. All right, take it away. Yeah, as I said, it's pretty similar to the other um, to the other solution, with the difference that here we are using the the work close uh, syntax of the of SQL, and I took some. Parts from the uh, uh, from the, um, the spec that uh, Clemens proposed. Uh, I recognize the wording. <laughs> <laughs> well, j just some parts. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I just converted from <laughs> docx to md. <laughs> no, apart the jokes. Um, well. Just check it out. There, there's really nothing more to say that this is similar. It, it has the, the same uh, goals of the other spec. It's just that here we are looking at a, at a different syntax. Yeah, so it's like, this might be a good example. This one mm -hmm. versus this one. Yeah, I still didn't, honestly, I still didn't elaborate about how, how timestamp works. And we don't have a type for URL, I guess, for URIs. Uh, uh, so, 
for URI, a URI reference, and time. Mm, I still did, I just still didn't elaborate at that, but I guess we can put it here. So I don't know. Yeah, I, I, I would love to have some some feedback on really which direction we want to take. Yeah. All right. Any high level questions? We'll give people time to go read this offline. But any high level questions for uh, Slinky? All right. Cool. Thank you. And that's it. Okay. So before we jump back to the design deep dive discussions, um, were there any of the topics people wanted to bring up? Okay. In that case, if you're not interested in the SDK stuff and you're not interested in the deep dive, which shame on you if you're not, you're free to leave. Uh, other than make sure if you do leave, I have you marked down for attendance. So let me just quickly run through it since I usually do this verbally anyway. So Lance, I got you, thank you. Um, all right, Lucas, are you there? Yes, I'm there. Okay, Jesse? Here. And John Mitchell, I got you. Mitchell, Doug? Got you. Here. All right, Timur, I got you. Christoph. Uh, Christoph. Hi. Hello. And uh, Chris, Christian? Hey there. Okay, what about Sandeep? Uh, I don't, I think he's new, I lost him. Okay. Did I miss anybody else? Oh, Lionel, I apologize. <laughs> Thank you, Lionel. Okay, anybody else? All right, in that case, let's jump back to the deep dive. Do, 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 do. Okay, so where we're left off, it sounded like Clemens, you may have been okay with this being under config, but let me poke on the other people in the group. Did anybody else have an opinion about that? Whether it should be a top level because it's special or whether it's just a predefined one or a well-known config option? Scott, did you want to say something? You came off mute. Maybe not. Okay, um, Manuel. No, I yeah, do. Come, <laughs> Sorry. Come that I think of it, um, since there is uh, the basic filter type that allows any of the cloud events properties to be filtered upon. Um, I think source really sort of belongs there or should be a top level feeling because config is really very specific that's just a thought because it's a cloud events field. Okay, so you're saying you want it up here. Or filters right. since there is the basic filter type for everything. Okay. All right, Scott, did you want to say something? Yeah, I, I agree with Clemens around config is this uh, very opaque grab bag of config that is vendor specific or whatever the service you're talking to. And, and if you want to make a, a very first class thing, we should pop it out to someplace that's not in this generic grab bag thing. Okay. Anybody else want to have an opinion or voice your opinion? Thank you, Ryan. Okay. Second that, third okay. Thing, fourth that, whatever it. Okay. Any objection then to removing it or not putting it under config and making it a top level thing? Done. Cool. Okay. So I then have another question to follow on then. Is source the Okay, yeah. make two things. Uh, the first one, is source the only cloud event property that's special or do we need to take into account any other ones? Um, type. Type comes to mind for me too. But type okay. could be a filter as well. Yeah. Well, source could, could be. Source, yeah, I was gonna say source could be as well. That and then this is this is why I wanted to bring it up because how far do we take this, right? How, how do we have we have in our um, just just to cite prior art, um, our subscription gesture for um, an event grid has um, the um, the source effectively and uh, then also the type. And then, and from there on, it's all filters. So if you um, you subscribe to on on a particular source, you subscribe to um, um, all events or a particular event, which means you leave this off, you or you don't. And then um, you, and then from there, whether you want to have all the blob events about JPEGs, um, is something you do then with a filter on the subject suffix. Okay, so let's keeping with the GitHub example, they allow you to specify a list of events. 
Mm -hmm. Does this need to be a singleton or an, or an array or um, wildcards? How do we? I would, I would probably make that here. I would, I would, so this is like, if I had the choice again, um, so I would probably make that an array. Yeah, and I, and I can say um, uh, uh, at Twilio we have uh, event streams, which is basically an array of event specific event types that you subscribe to. So it's aligned there too. Okay, um, so Timur's asking why an array. Can you elaborate, Timur, in terms of why you're asking, given what we talked about, how something like GitHub allows you to specify more than one? No, I'll put it in chat just a question because like maybe I'm wrong here, but what if I want to subscribe to a wildcard type? Basically, I want to say whatever source you have available, I want to subscribe to type this. I think types is, I think type const already constrains what you get out of source. So if you just leave off type, you get everything. The way I'd implement that is you specify no type and then you add a filter with this wildcard. Yeah, that's I was going to my next question is do we allow wildcards in here? And I'm assuming the answer is based upon what you just said, Scott, the answer is no. This is meant to be more for static things. If you want to do fancy things like wildcards, that's yeah. when you have to use filters. Is that fair? I see these top level fields as targeting a particular producer. Okay. I like that. And for that for that producer, the config is you know uh, specific to them. And then from that event stream, you could then specify these filters. I like the way you said describe that. Okay. So if you leave type off, then you're just targeting the source. If you're if you're specifying source and type, you're you're targeting specifically the source with that type of event. Yeah, and if you leave both of those off, you're targeting whoever you're talking to to produce this subscription. Perfect. Right. Okay, so I believe- I like, I like these agreements after long struggles. <laughs> yeah, I think, I think it, was a, it took a while to understand where we, each of us are coming from, but I think we're getting there and this is good. Okay, so I think where we landed is, uh, well, actually let me back up. Are there other cloud event properties that we want to possibly raise to the top level? Well, instead of source, there could be service. It's not a cloud event attribute, but um, it's known from discovery. Yeah, the question is whether whether service is the right term there. I think that's true. We've been struggling for service quite a while and had a lot of terms. So hold on a minute. Something significant enough that the top level is important. So wait, Eric, I'm not sure what are you saying. This we should keep it source or change it to service or or what? My question is, what is we're, we're having kind of this debate over whether something's important enough to put in the, at the top level. And I guess I was wondering what, I, what, what's the basis for, you know, kind of at a level up for putting something there. I, I guess, I, I, I don't know. I, it's, I, I didn't raise an objection, but I, I do think it's a little, we, I, don't, I don't know why we would put source at the top level rather than in config. Anybody want to respond to that? Yeah, I think where we were with that was that config is a a um, generic property bag that you give to um, the implementation, and that implement and that might contain um, um, application specific um, uh, information about about how to configure the effectively how to configure the source for for you know by what cadence it gives you events or. Um, or some other some other um, some other information that you want to give the source specifically. Yeah, that was my original thought about what config would be. It would be totally like what? How do how do I want this rate limited? What kind of properties yeah. of delivery am I interested in? And that's why you know originally, uh, Doug putting the config there as you had it seemed a little odd to me, but. Um, I could also see maybe if we use config, config as a space for the static stuff, why that maybe makes sense or something. But um, then uh, elevating uh, some of the cloud event attributes into the top level, I, I mean, I, I guess we're guaranteed to have them, and um, but it, but it doesn't necessarily seem very clear why they're they're. I don't know. Just my thoughts. 
I think I'm internally justifying it as the this particular producer can provide you the entire schema of what it expects config to be, and we don't have to do some funky two-way merge of some properties we define plus your custom config, and here's what the final config uh, schema should be. Sounds like great reasoning. Okay. Thank you. So, okay, as we write this up, is it fair? Is it fair to say then that? These types of properties are for, as Scott said, for targeting a particular producer, where these are just for configuring the producer. Yep. Is that, does everybody agree with that kind of, a, of description? Because I think we need to put that into the spec somewhere. Okay. Um, so hold on a minute here. Let's go back to the cloud events spec. Okay, so are there other properties here that should be top level? Especially when we start to ask that question, that's when I wonder why source wouldn't end up in the filters. Well, I think we're, we're trying to pair it with the discovery contract, not the cloud events contract. Well, let's go back, where am I going? <laughs> No, oh, this one, sorry, Jason, I'm sorry. So, Scott, you mean we're trying to map it with these things? And then source, more... source is missing. Uh, hmm. Because I, I, I gotta be honest with you, Eric, I, I'm actually okay with where we're landing or where I think we're, Jeez. I'm okay where I think we're going with this, but I do agree with you. I, it makes me very uncomfortable because I hate the idea of, because, oh, we're the spec authors, we can say what's special, but users out to, who use the spec can't, right? Our data is special. And I've always been bothered by that. And, but I also understand why we landed where we did, right? <laughs> well, can to we be clear, can we I'm, think of I'm expressing it weakly. I, uh, my role here is to be a, a not so dumb, end user and kind of serve as a representative. I'm not really on the block for implementing uh, most of this. So no, these are I'm all good happy points. To go with what everybody thinks. No, 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 keep, keep, keep bringing this stuff up. It's all good. <laughs> it's only making it better. If we can rationalize it as the, these top level fields help you find the entry in the discovery configuration, maybe that helps. Uh, it, filters are crossed out. Are, are we saying that filters are not a thing? No, no, no. Th this was just in my particular example. I crossed it out to say I'm not using filters. Let me uncross that out. That's obviously going to confuse people. There you go. It is there. It's just optional. So, so I because config comes from the discovery as well, right? The schema for config. Yes, it's right here. It's specific for a service, isn't it? Correct, yes. And events defines what what you might filter on because that shows you the kind of payloads and expected values. And so our, our next goal is how can we find this particular service entry from the subscription creation? And we don't need to care about uh, the subscription config or the events so much. Never thought of it that way. I don't know if I like it or not. <laughs> um, well, I'm I guess I'm struggling with why would you need to find the discovery entry from this? That I think the that is how you find out. Uh, that's how you know which uh, producer is going to be uh, subscribed upon. Okay. I think that get that, I think that may be leading to what the question I was going to ask next, which is, what are the values in here? I mean, it, are we expecting this value to be the exact value that you would see on the event that flows, and would the user always know that in advance? Okay, so to, so to, to go down this all the way, what if that instead of source was a, a discovery service ID? Right, there's a service ID there. 
<laughs> what if you just use that thing? Because it's very specific on who you're talking about. I would like to subscribe to that service because that's that's the intent, right? To find a particular producer. But can't they- it Isn't a source a URI though? It, it resolves to a URI, but the, the producer and the source potentially could be different because I'm talking to an aggregator. Yeah, the the service is not necessarily the service is not uh, the service identifies the subscription endpoint. It doesn't it doesn't identify the the sources that are available at that at that endpoint necessarily. That's why we have a that's why we have a source template there. Right, right, not, because not in the example, but in the spec. Yeah, you're right. I keep forgetting it's not there. So, okay, so let's go back to here. Is this going to be a URI that has to exactly match the source value that would appear in the cloud event? Yeah. That was a yes, Clemens? Yeah, I, I say yes. What do other people think? Seems over constrained to me. So if it doesn't match, what does that mean? Is that confusing to people? If they put a source value here, but then the actual event themselves that they get is different. And if it's different, what does this value mean then? How does that how does the user who puts that value in there know what to put in there? Right. And, and if they specify off. that, what if they also want to specify the subject? And that goes back to the other question of which properties do we want to elevate, right? I think that match on source is very fine grained. Yes, it's it's the thing. So I'm I'm always going back to the to the to the principal position of saying the source is the thing that actually that it, that raises the events. Yes, but if, if you have a certain scheme of defining those source URIs. Could also want to to select uh, according to that scheme. Then we're back to then we're back to having a. Um, I mean, we can we can we can potentially allow for wild cards there, um, or some prefix scheme that then catches a bunch of those sources. I would. I would personally not allow it, but I'm not against having that. Not necessarily have, have against that, uh, against having that in the spec. It's just I, 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 just, I, I still want to have a clear differentiation between what what source is here, and what what the filter is. It's still about the acquisition of the events, and not about filtering the acquired stream down. Yeah, so those top level attributes are for routing subscriptions upstream, and the filter is for the opposite direction. That's, mm -hmm. that's how I see it. Yeah, exactly. So yeah, what, 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 one practical um, uh, example here that might be interesting to think about is you, you might have um, a system or, or a consumer that is interested in subscribing to a source, but it doesn't, it's not aware of what the source is, right? Uh, and, and there are cases where um, you want those things to be, to be as decoupled as, as possible. Um, and the, the, the source might be created and, um, uh, and move through its life cycle faster than the consumer can actually discover that it exists in the first place. And so I, I think there, there is maybe a case to support um, the templatized and, and wildcard approach here. Mm -hmm. So if we allow wildcards in here, we probably then would need a mechanism by which the subscription manager can advertise whether they support wildcards or are we going to mandate they do? Um, and are we slowly heading down the path of dialects so you can support fancy expressions? Well, we, have, we have the fancy we have the fancy thing in terms of, of a source template, right? True. Or in discovery. So so we can probably repurpose that idea. And also allow that.
So they so they would actually have to type this and not put blob store slash star. So they would have to actually I, know this syntax in advance that it's called I'm, bucket. I have not. I I have not. Uh, even though it might surprise you, I don't have RFC sixty five seventy in my head. <laughs> <laughs> Shocking. Well, I'm just looking at this example, right? I as a user, I, I'm not sure. I would e easily be able to discover this or want to be bothered. I just, it seems like a lot of work. No, I don't know what, I don't know whether, whether that RFC probably even supports what uh, allows for wildcards. It might. How about we click that? Oh, I was going to say, please don't make me open it. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Uh, <yeah. laughs> well, the word wildcard does not appear in the document. I don't know what that means. It has question marks. It has, uh, I do see stars. It's an explode modifier. Oh God, that's a, that's a, that spec is pretty complicated, is it not? So I think we only support one level. What is it called? Yeah, maybe maybe you want to just maybe yeah. strike the reference altogether. We, we intentionally restricted this to the first level because ah. it's so complex. Yeah. Oh, so here's level one. Are there known implementations of this? Just to check it. Okay. Okay. So yeah, they then, don't. Go ahead. And yeah, then that's probably not the not the right choice. I'm sure there are Open there API. are wildcard. There's a wildcard thing. Open API supports a level one or level two. If I recall correctly, of this. I'm, I just, I'm getting very nervous <laughs> that this is going to end up being basically a filter from a syntax perspective. And maybe we have to go there, but it just, it just amuses me given that we pulled it out of the filter. Right, so we could go back to thinking about that, this field as selecting a particular entry in the discovery list. I'm still fascinated and confused by you wanting to link this back to the discovery spec. Yeah, so am I. <laughs> because you use discovery to find out what you can sub subscribe to. Yeah. yeah. It's a, it, it's a su subscription manager discovery mechanism. Otherwise you need discovery in the subscription API. Like you need some way to know what this is going to do. And so the, the two specs are, uh, they, they leverage each other. Yeah, yeah. But discovery is also optional. So right. it's understanding what you're going to do. <laughs> no, what, what, what I mean is, I'm, I, I, if you're suggesting that we should replace source with just subscription ID, I'm not sorry, discovery ID, or I'm sorry, service ID, that would mean that in order to do this kind of uh, matching of the source or the producer, you'd have to have a discovery spec implementation there as well. I mean, I, I could be off base too, right? It's not unheard of. But... <laughs> <laughs> well, okay. Hold on, Manuel. Your hands up, Manuel. Is that old or is that new? I apologize. No, that, that's totally new. Um, I want to say on the source that initially I, with the whole discussion, I saw specifying a source and that is an exact one uh, meant that it allows the subscription manager to um, make a subsequent or transient subscription to whatever the source is. So I also had a feeling that this might, being a top level element, that this might render the subscription valid or invalid. So when I specify in an exact source that this is not known to the subscription manager, then it wouldn't allow this. If it really is is now, the way this is being talked about, and I totally agree with you, is a filter now. Then this is completely super fluent to specify it as a top level element, uh, uh, element. That's my opinion. So I think what you're suggesting is it's a static string, no wildcards. 
I think that was the the uh, the background when we talked about it earlier, wasn't it? Yeah. Okay. So from from my implementation preference is that's a that is indicating the exact source. And it would be the exact same value you would see in the cloud event. Yes, that's my that's my implementation pre preference. I'm I'm not getting in the way of 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 wildcards, but my implementation preference would be for that to be the exact URI. Well, one option is to go with something as simple as that. And then as we start implementing this and playing with it, we come back and revisit it later. That is one option. What do people think about that? Well, we could try that. OK. Yeah, and, and I think as, as long as it's possible in filters um, uh, and, and you know the support of um, you know, the various dialects for filters are optional. I think that gives enough flexibility to the implementations um, to choose, you know, what they want to support. Yeah. And, and just just from a just going back going back into into implementation detail for a second, um, I can I can um, obviously make a subscription manager that can offer subscriptions at all kinds of levels, which means um, I'm st again sticking to the storage, the storage account example. I can say the source, uh, you come to me and say that I want the source for this to be, um, uh, you know, HTTP storage service slash um, container. And then, and then everything that happens is have that a container that shows up to you as, as events where the source is being set to that container. And the subject is then the path, the remaining path, the relative path of the file that was just created or changed or whatever. And then I can have the same subscription manager. You can walk up to it and says, no, my source is actually service slash container slash directory slash another directory. And then um, I only get events for that scope um, with that URI being the source, because that's the thing I subscribed on, and then the subject being the relative path from that URI to the file that was created. So I can I can create this I can create this flexibly. It's not that that I'm necessarily constrained by that the subscription manager can can go and interpret and, and create scoping um, where you know splitting up the 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 the, the, the identifier for the thing that the event is ultimately about between the subscription scope and then the 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 remaining scope that is then expressed in the subject and kind of make this make this flexible so so making this a concrete uri is not necessarily limiting you in in um in how broad the scope can be that you can go and subscribe on anybody want to comment on that Okay. It is, um, for some reason, I will, the raise hand feature is gone from my version <laughs> of Zoom, so I apologize. But I guess um, partly to, to Clement's point, but but I guess a step back is what I mean. You know, given that we're working on the discovery spec and this and workflow and all these things, like what is the you know what what interoperability is is required versus optional versus something in between right like how many different models are we trying to shoehorn what are we trying to make the sort of happy path and try and get people to 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 go to versus what's possible right which i which i think i, I think i think we have to have some kind of position or bias or something in what what is the expected flow of how people are going to use things because otherwise like it's too open-ended like too many people do too many different things yeah i agree with you i think i think and that's part of i think why this discussion has been so good because i think we're trying to find that balance between flexibility versus being you know too prescriptive kind of thing 
And that's why I think based upon, but let's say we, we stick with what we just have here, right? I probably would now rewrite this example. I probably would not put these down here anymore. I would actually all three of them. I would, these would all in my mind be up here someplace. And I think that's getting closer to what I think you were looking for, John, which is a little bit more of a commonality to get interop. Yes. Yep. So this is all good. Okay, so I think what we're talking about is forcing this to be a singleton. URI must match the CE source that's going to appear in the event. No wildcards. Are we okay with that as our current starting position? And we can revisit later as necessary. Yay! Wait. <laughs> hold, hold off on the cheering until I get a, a confirmation okay. that no one's going to object. <laughs> Anybody want to voice an opinion against that as a starting point? It seems okay. a fine starting point. It seems likely that that's going to be problematic for some use cases. Okay. But, I would, let's start there. Okay, great. Eric, in particular, since you since you believe that, if you can think of one that isn't completely insane, can you open up an issue? Because I would love to use that as a forcing function to have more discussion about this. So if you if you think of one. Um, okay. Cool, thank you. Now type, I'm assuming, I don't remember what type is, whether it's just a string or URI, but whatever it is in the CE spec, it's going this is gonna be an array of those things. Does that sound right to everybody? Okay, and in both cases, okay, well, actually, maybe not. I was gonna say that in both cases, these are optional for the, for the subscription manager to support, but now I'm not so sure. Um, obviously, it's always optional for the subscriber to, to include them in their subscription request, but should these be optional for a event producer or a subscription manager to support? I'm inclined, I'm still leading towards making them optional for the subscription manager, but I'm not 100% yeah. sure to be honest. Clemens, were you saying you agree with that? Um, I yeah, I think those fields are optional because there's an, there's an implied value if you leave them off. Well, the way you just said that implies they're optional for the subscription to include. That's not yeah. the same thing as the subscription manager. That, that's yeah. not the same thing as it being optional for the subscription manager to support. That's true. The, the subscription manager always knows the source. It's just that whether it's told by this by through the message or whether it knows it intrinsically, that's the that's the difference. Okay. So you're opting for type and source to be mandatory for the manager to support. To know, yeah. Uh, type source, yes. Type no. Okay. What do other people think about that? Optional for. Client required for manager. And this is optional for Kai oh, for manager. What do people think about that? Yes, no? Uh, this yeah. is Jesse. I, I guess I would be concerned about the, the, the coupling aspects of that. If it's required to know the source of things, what impact does it have on on coupling? Can you elaborate a little on the what you um, what you mean by coupling? You mean for for example, in the aggregator case that we keep talking about, does that mean the aggregator has to understand all sources in advance? Exactly. Yeah. I mean, there's situations where you're just where you don't have to understand the where the event is coming from you want to be the sort of indifferent middleman and just distribute messages from whatever source comes in to whatever destination based on say a topic string or something like that which would typically be the type in this in this use case you know, the, the source is irrelevant unless you choose to make it part of the part of the type uh, you know if you have a naming structure that would you know allow it to be part of that type uh so i would say for some managers that's that source is irrelevant right that's why i was actually going to push back on the wording that i think clemens used which is that the manager has to know about the sources and i would i was going to think of it differently 
well, yes, they may in some implementations, but in the aggregator case, it's it's more the aggregator must be able to must be would be forced to accept this field, but how they choose to implement it is up to them. Meaning they could end up merging it with the filters and turn it into a filter, right? Uh, yeah, I mean, I guess if you if you are cloud event compliant and you you have to accept the source um, element, then that makes sense that you know, your your right. filter would be able to be filtered on the on the source. That makes sense to me. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I was I was going to say I, I think there's a difference between like having semantic knowledge about the source and knowing what the source string is because if it's cloud event compliant, like that those are those are in the cloud event, right? So. They, they, they already have access to that. So why, why would that be you know, more complex to, to require supporting? Right. Yeah, I'm thinking through it, just sort of our implement, implementation at Solace, you know, our sort of baseline implementation wouldn't have source. We don't really care about the source. It's all about, you know, the topic string. But if, you know, we are presumably cloud event uh, compliant, um, then we could potentially implement the source as a selector, and then you know that's our the underlying implementation of that would be you know, selector based essentially. So I guess yeah, thinking through it more, I guess that makes sense. Okay, so <clears throat> we're saying it's okay that it's required for them. That doesn't mean they'd have to necessarily know in advance. They may end up using it as a or doing maybe they may end up implementing it as a filter, but that's a behind the scenes thing for them to do. Does that sound right? So. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Anybody want to comment more on that? Want to disagree? Okay. Just to reiterate, right, we're on filters. Um, we were assuming that they're optional for this for the for this client, meaning whether it appears in the subscription request, but it's also optional for a manager to support. What do people think about that last part? No objection. Okay. Jesse, did you want to say something? I was just going to support that. Okay. And just to be, to be clear, the minute something like this appears, um, or the minute we make this decision, to me, that implies we have to add something to the discovery spec so that the subscriber knows whether they can specify a filter or not. So that implies a change in the discovery spec, just to let you guys know where my head's at. So that means a, a bigger PR or two multiple PRs. Okay. Um, all right, I don't remember for sure if we finished our discussion about are there other properties here that we wanted to raise up? I think was subject one of one someone mentioned? Or is subject too much of a wild card thing that it makes no sense to ask the person to think of a static value? I mean, what if you wanted to subscribe to one file in a bucket? I think is maybe one of the use cases, right, Clemens? Would that be okay to do it as a top level thing? Or are we gonna say, no, that's a filter thing? Uh, say it again. I'm wondering whether subject should be raised to a top level thing in the subscription the same way we did with source and type. No. Can you elaborate on why you don't think so? Uh, subscription, is, su subscription is not, a su the subject is not the thing you subscribe on. The subject is a description of the, um, the substructure inside of the thing that you subscribe on. So su the subject only shows up in the event itself because it it further qualifies what that event is, is about within that source. So if you want to go and if you want to constrain the subject, then you would go and use that, you would, you would use a filter for this. At least that's in my in my very confident world of, of prior art. Confident world like that. Anybody uh, want to comment on that? Want to disagree? It's an optional field in cloud event, so I don't see it a top level field. Oh, that's a good point. Required versus optional. You're right. That could be a good point too. So let's just double check. Sub uh, type source. Okay, those are both required. Good. Just want to double check. Okay. Anybody disagree with that conclusion? That no other, no other properties here should be raised up. I 
Okay. Uh, oh, go ahead. I, I'm still um, I, I'm still going back and forth on whether I think type should be required to support for the manager. Um, because I, 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 again, the manager already has the type, um, and especially when it's a required field in the cloud event, why why wouldn't we just make that required for the manager if it already has access to that? Okay. Anybody want to comment on that? Clemens, I think you were saying that should be optional for a manager to support. Did you have a strong opinion one way or the other? Um, I think it's um, I think it's optional. Yeah, but and why? You, why? Because if you don't specify, I, I think of that as a as a further constraint. No, 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 it, no. We're not talking about optional for this. Not optional for the subscriber. We're talking about optional for the manager. Oh, optional for the manager to know? Not, uh, to, to support. <laughs> or to support, ah, to support. Um, mm -hmm. I think since we, I think that's optional. And that is because the subscription manager is acting on, on someone else's behalf and they may be getting events that they don't know about. Okay, I'm not, I don't think I'm phrasing the question right the way, the way you answered that. What we're talking about is whether all subscription managers have to support the idea of type appearing as a top level thing. Well, that means that I have to act on it. Yes. And acting on it could mean adding it to the filter if you support filters. It doesn't necessarily mean using it uh, as a using it as part of your mechanism to go talk to some entity to say turn on your events. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mm, I'm I'm fine if we require it. Anybody else want to chime in? Like like the other decisions, we could start with the more restrictive one and, and loosen it up later as we has use cases as we have use cases. But anybody want to speak up now? All right. Thank you, Ryan. Anything else about these things? Yeah, All right. my understanding, the sorry, the filters have just become optional for the manager to support in uh, my view of the world. So I, I'm not sure if the top level elements that are mandatory and required by the manager to support are now enough <laughs> for my understanding, but that, okay, yeah. Can, can, you, can you say that again with different words? I'm not sure I followed. So um, I was under the impression that any subscription that I can issue to a subscription manager can always be filtered by any cloud event field with the basic dialect that is mandatory to support, but um, with the entire filters to be optional for a manager to support, that has just gone. So now there is only uh, selecting a single source or none. And luckily, okay, uh, we, we have the list of types. That's for the minimal um, portability between subscription managers. I to yes, I think wonder over that. I mean, it, it depends on what a subscription endpoint subscription URL represents. If from that URL, I can only uh, get a limited amount of uh, throughput, then yes. If that means uh, data bursts with the or either selecting the source or then uh, going all the way and not selecting a source, but getting the the full blast from that subscription manager, I'm not sure if that's sufficient. But okay, uh, it will turn out with a little bit of practice, probably. I'm struggling. I'm trying to understand what you're what you're concerned with, because I don't I don't want to leave this if if 
if this is a, if this is a problem. <laughs> we had the previous example of 900 sources, and then uh, whether or not we want to be able to somehow limit that. Now, the only option I have is having a subscription for each of the 300 that I'm interested in, or taking the full blast of the 900 sources and filtering it out myself because mm -hmm. filters are optional for a manager to support. Correct. If the, but see, yes, and I think I understand why you as a subscriber can look at that and say, oh my gosh, that's a pain in the butt. Um, but if that's what the if that's the only thing the subscription manager can support, then you're stuck with it. Yeah. Right. Because to me, the question about whether it's optional for the manager or not is is what is the burden we're going to put on subscription managers, and in essence, filtering, I know that's gonna be the wrong word to use, but filtering on source and type because they're required properties and these are just static strings as of right now anyway, seems like a very, very low bar. It's not a huge ask of them. This requires expression processing, right? Even the simple one that we have, that still requires a fair amount of processing. And that may be a two bar of a thing to ask, for example, I can't ask that of GitHub today, as far as I know. This I can, or I can at least encode that into a in an adapter. Yeah, I mean that's the way I'm trying to. No, I understand, and it's it's the uh, the burden of the subscription manager implementation because that has only southbound interfaces to all the different uh, messaging technologies underneath. So, yeah, uh, making filters possible could be difficult. For them okay yeah okay and i'm good for now okay Thanks. okay yeah obviously like like everything we can always revisit it later okay any other comments questions concerns about these three okay i mean when we're talking about making i'm sorry i'm talking a lot today but when we're talking about making these uh filters kind of mandatory um it, it's really implying a, a certain mental model of the consumers of the people using these things to implement systems and and i'm, I'm not sure that uh i mean like uh, clemens uh was presenting uh, a mental model that uh, really has source as something that's really important but but i can imagine a mental model that says the subscription uh, api that i'm talking to it's that that system's job to make sure that only trusted entities come in here and i i want anyone any source to tell me about uh, things of a certain type or with a certain subject or you know whatever the the criteria of my model is relevant in my application might be and um, so I'm a little uncomfortable. I, I again I'm not implement these in implementing these things so uh, um, I, I'm happy to let the group decide what's best for it. But um, it, it seems like uh, potentially there's a constraint. Uh, and, and a decision about what that mental model uh, the application developers approaching the, the subscription API through. And um, I'm not sure that's an appropriate thing to constrain uh, given the kind of broad level of uh, engagement that this is supposed to be specifying. Can you be a little more, con okay, first of all, stop apologizing. I love all your input, your questions. This is all good. <laughs> That's why we. That's why doing these these long design discussions. So so keep speaking up. Um, but can you give a little more concreteness to what your concern is, like maybe with an example, just so it's a little more clear in my head in terms of what you're worried about? Like we're asking the the subscription manager to implement X, and that's going to be a problem for them. Well, it, it may just be wasted. So if, if in the scope of a particular subscription uh, provider. Uh, then um, the sorry, my wife and child. Um, <laughs> that that uh, you know, source may be totally irrelevant to that subscription, the implementer of the subscription API, but also to uh, the client. So, in, in this case, it's a kind of meaningless thing, and maybe that's just an uh, API that's non-compliant, and nobody cares because no one involved cares. But um, but. Uh, in a particular model, we really don't care about uh, what the source of this information is. Um, maybe, 
I don't know, maybe it's something like you're, you're implementing a, uh, a stock trading system that listens to uh, the events describing news articles that are being published by all the, all the uh, news outlets. And, and you don't really care what the source of the information is, but you want anything about any of the stocks that you're interested in, or, or perhaps you, know, you don't care you know, about that kind of filtering and you're going to do some kind of a uh, aggregation in your system to um, identify wh where you might want to make position changes. And, um, and so I, by making something mandatory, it's kind of implying that 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 is inherently a part of the model that you're coming with uh, for your application. And I, I, yeah, I, I don't know that that necessarily means we shouldn't make any assertions about that model, but there it is. Yeah. Um, hmm. so, so we have a, so source is something that's material in the cloud event per se. So that, that's a required field. Which means, I, yeah, think, sure. I don't mind being told where it came from. Right. Uh, but, but, but I have to then uh, treat that source as a, an important part of the specification of what I'm interested in hearing about. I don't know. Um, I mean, uh, it's kind of uh, I, that's why I go to, say, a news uh, website because they're listening to all the sources that might have relevant information about something, and um, they are then. Uh, uh, writing up interesting articles that, that inform me about the world, right? They, but so, but I don't so care about saying, this source. But, I want there to be one. Sorry, go ahead. But your, your, your source is, let's say, the New York Times. And it can be as broad as the New York Times, but you still have a source. So, so if you, if you were, so if we're, if we're sticking with that example, or let's say it's Bloomberg, right? Then, then Bloomberg has a subscription mechanism, and we have those things with RSS feeds, um, where you can go and subscribe to any kinds of kind of news. But the scope at which you subscribe is not the the um, you know the rainbow news or the business news or the sports news, but you really want to have all of it. Well, then you subscribe to all of it. To all of it, you subscribe to kind of the, the main feed of it, and then you get everything. But you still have a source that is the newspaper. And you're just not scoping it down in any particular way. Sure. Okay. I mean, I, I agree with that. Um, I guess uh, maybe maybe the the solution then is there's a default value of whatever the subscription API is mm -hmm. that you're subscribing to, and, and that was the. And that was the implied, so, so that's, I said, what I said a while ago was, I think the resource, the, the, the subscription manager has an implied notion of what the source, of what the source is. And if you leave the source off here in the subscription gesture, then it's automatically that source notion that the, that the subscription manager has, but there's always, there, I think there's always a, a, a notion of a source and that's something that's intrinsic to the subscription manager because that's the, the UI, it's gonna stamp on the messages that are, that are being published. So, I, okay, I just realized what the time is. So I'd like to actually continue this discussion briefly in a minute, but <clears throat> it is the top of the hour. And there are, I think, two things to be nice to happen. One is, if you're not interested in the SDK, or in particular, if you're not interested in the summer of code or the mentorship thing, but you're interested in the discussion, now's your time for a quick bio break. Because <laughs> um, I think it's important that we go back and do what I said, which is jump over to the SDK talk and see if, and, and get that out of the way for people who are interested in that, if that's okay with everybody. And so Slinky, you can't escape because um, I know you, that you're interested in this. So why don't we assume that we're gonna spend five minutes or so talking about this and then we'll, circle, we'll come back and, and continue the deep dive discussion. Is that okay with everybody? Yeah, and I'm gonna step away for a moment. Okay, so looking at 12 after at the worst, hopefully, unless this conversation goes on for a long time, but I don't think it will. So Slinky. Uh, so, I'd have to be honest. Uh, 
So uh, Summer of Code or Linux Foundation Mentorship, it, it doesn't really matter. So if we want to go with a Linux Foundation Mentorship, it's fine. Uh, the thing is that, to be honest, I, uh, I'm not sure we really have some good project for that. And we need somebody that takes care of mentoring. And I'm not sure I'll be able to, to stay to, to have time for this, honestly. Okay. Yeah, that, that's a very big point. We need ideas and we need people who have the time to yeah. mentor. Yeah. I know I initially said that I that I wanted to do that and, and, and I really wish to do that, but to be honest, I I I I don't want to be the kind of mentor that then doesn't have time for that. So mm -hmm. that's fair. Yeah. Okay. Is there anybody else on the call who has a good idea and has time to devote to this to be a mentor? So just to do a, a quick recap for the ideas. Uh, my initial thoughts were, um, one is uh, a, new, a new SDK in a language that we don't have. And the other one was pick up the, um, the integration test, conformance test idea that we, had the, that we tried to, to bootstrap at some point, but then we never had time to, to work on it. So to, uh, to extend the conformance, uh, the send the conformance test, to test suite and to actually use it in every SDK. As far as I know, no SDK except Golang is using the conformance testing uh, that we developed, that we bootstrapped. So of the two projects, I don't know, none of them sounds really strong enough. You get what I mean? Okay. Hey, Lance says JavaScript is using it. There you go. Cool, Lance. Okay. Um, anybody want to speak up uh, or volunteer, I should say? Otherwise, we will let the idea just sort of wither on the vine. Well, by the way, the uh, January 31 is for spring, uh, like they do every season, as far as I understood. So, uh, the deadline of January 31 is only for the spring mentorship. Yep. Uh, like the one for the summer is pushed uh, on April or end March. So I don't recall, but it's far. So if you want to discuss this again in the future and we have people that want to want to chime in and propose themselves. Okay. All right. Anybody want to volunteer? All right, I'm not hearing any. I believe the decision is. You guys, I mean, are you guys just doing the cloud events as the case? If we could include like the workflow as the case, I could definitely, you know, help out on both sides, maybe. Yeah, I mean, this is. I, I think technically it's anything under the serverless working group. So yeah, if you want, if you have an idea and and have the time to mentor for a workflow thing, go for it. Okay. Um, you, you technically, I, I mean, I, I don't know what the process is here in terms of work group approval, but I can't imagine you'd come up with anything that's really bad in terms of what that we'd hate the idea. So if you can think of one, I would go ahead and just sign up. Um, just keep in mind the deadline is January 31st. Okay. Thank you. Just, um, if you do end up doing it, just let us know at the normal working group call. So if the other people want to be involved in some way, they can join you. Okay, anything else? All right, cool. Thank you all. In that case, oh, any other topics for SDK? I had like a general SDK question. Uh, and um, I know on your website, you have this int integration sections, you know, you have all those companies and all, all the places, you know, that, that are supporting or using the specification. Uh, we had a recent request of like putting somebody under that's using our SDKs and I see for cloud events, you guys are not like doing that at all, or at least promoting use usage or other people they're using it. 
I, what should I do in that case? I, I, I personally, in, in SDK Java, uh, in the readme, at the end, there is who's using it. Just put it. Oh, I didn't see that. I'm sorry then. Okay. Yeah, uh, but I, I don't do this in other SDKs. Yeah, maybe I should do that in SDK Java. It'd be a good thing to do if we have the information, yeah. Okay. Anything else? All right, cool, thank you all. In that case, if you're not interested in the deep dive and you're here just for SDK, you're now free to leave. Um, I'll drop people, by. Okay, bye Slinky. So just to, to try to wrap up the discussion you're having there, Eric, before we uh, got sidetracked for a sec. Um, I, I have to admit, I got a little, little lost when you were talking about your concern because I wasn't 100% clear to me when you're talking about um, what you may want to sort of get events for, whether you're talking as a subscription manager or as a subscriber. Um, and and I'm, I'm looking at this strictly as a subscription manager at this point in time, because I think you were focusing on this part, right? Whether it's required for the manager to support. And are you suggesting that there are cases where a subscription manager can't do any kind of filtering on the events he, that, it, that it may receive if it's, if it's an aggregator or something like that? Or you asked saying it may be too big of a burden to ask of them? I think what I was saying, because I, I think that's a good, uh, I was probably losing track of that distinction because I'm, I'm largely looking at things from a, uh, a client uh, perspective, but um, there's, uh, I, uh, it seemed to me that there is part of the use case that made it um, not valuable for the manager uh, to hand, have explicit uh, handling of source, that, that source would be uh, required, supported. Um, and, and so, you know, they could uh, implement support um, to be spec compliant, but um, not, that doesn't make it useful. And, and so um, uh, what, what in the sense that is, is saying, uh, you know, if you're not using this, if this isn't important to how in your uh, case events are filtered, that you're doing it wrong. And I'm, I'm not sure, I don't think that the group would want to say that, but, I, um, but maybe I'm, I'm not thinking deeply enough about this, so. Um, so uh, that's that's why I was bringing up kind of the mental models people are approaching their implementation with is is because that then uh, the way that the uh, managers are constrained uh, leads to um, a pretty strong opinion about uh, the API and its use. <laughs> I have one, one, one thought here, which is I actually think it's okay and in some ways important to have opinions um, about um, the, the mental model and how things are structured. And I think that's one of the reasons that source and type are actually required in the, the cloud event spec, right? It's because, um, uh, you know, from, from, from my personal experience, those are always just, those are just fundamental things that are, are always interesting um, in, um, in, in the context of, of consuming events and understanding where events are coming from and, and what they are. Um, so um, uh, I, 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 and I appreciate the, um, you know, making sure that we're focused on the use cases, um, but, but it, you know, th there's, a, there's a balance of like going completely generic, right? Um, and, and being completely agnostic of use cases versus having opinions and people understanding what it should be used for. Um, and you know, from my experience, source and type are you know part and parcel of of consuming events in general. Um, it's uh, I I apologize, Eric. Um, I didn't eat breakfast. I didn't eat lunch, and it's coming up on one. Or it's after one o'clock, so I may be even just completely losing my mind. But but I'm, I'm still struggling. Oh, okay. Um, I'm still struggling with 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 what your concern is meaning 
are, are you worried that if we make this required for a manager that it's too big of a burden for them to support? Uh, too big isn't the concern. Um, it, it may be uh, useless. Okay, elaborate on that because I'm not, because I understand that when we say useless, is that because they only maybe have a single source that's flowing through their system? Uh, that or, or their entire ecosystem, the people that would be interested in subscribing don't care and would never use it. Um, I, I think uh, just that uh, I, I think that the point made before that sometimes opinions are important to have completely agreed. And, and this may be a case where I'm, I'm, uh, I'm going for the generic too easily. Uh, uh, that is a failure mode for me. Well, there's a there's a generic time so the, a generic source of events, arguably, that has zero scoping, and that's the wall clock. And still, if you're subscribing to a particular wall clock, let's say the UTC clock, um, you would probably still get a source get a, get a get a source to just disambiguate that wall clock from any other part of the system. So I think the um, I think there is some there's always some level of scoping in your events. And this, the scoping is expressed in the events per se through the source. And then it's optional for the subscription manager to be told the to source. And that's why we made the field optional. But I think the subscription manager always has to deal with, with uh, source information. I don't think that exists. I don't think the, the zero, I don't think there's, there's, there, there are use cases outside maybe the UTC wall clock. Um, that are um, that there are, that can do completely without scoping. So, John, your hands up. Yeah. So, I'll, I'll, uh, I was going to ask for an example from Eric, but the 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 um, what Cummins is saying. Let me let me give you an example from the enterprise world. Enterprise developers are lazy bastards, <laughs> right? and so the, the notion of I just want a fire hose aggregator that some other team controls. And so I, it, I, in essence, have no other actual source other than the fire hose aggregator, right? And then I'm gonna pick apart just whatever out of that fire hose that it gives me, or I have some other, you know, whether it's a config value or some other filter that is all I care about and I communicate that in whatever custom way it is, is going to be how people, developers like that actually use the system. Because that's actually how they use a lot of these systems today in whatever custom configs that exist. But from our standpoint, that's that's a degenerate case that like making making source in this particular thread optional like that doesn't help at all, right? If people are gonna um, willfully use uh, or you know degenerate their use cases, we're, there's nothing we can do to mandate against that anyway. And letting you know letting providers uh, or producers off the hook or the aggregator off the hook to not support source, like that doesn't seem to buy anything in that particular case. Does that make sense? So let me let me rephrase or let me, let me echo back what I think I'm hearing you say. Um, so let's say someone comes up with a use case that says, hey, I have an aggregator. It's going to get events from a whole bunch of different event producers. And all this aggregator wants to do is be a funnel for it. So anybody can subscribe to that aggregator and they're just going to get all events. The aggregator is going to be really, really dumb. It's not going to do any filtering. It's not going to do anything except get an event and then spit it back out. Okay, it's a proxy more than anything else. Yep. And I think what I hear Eric saying is that's a valid use case. And therefore, it's also it, it would be invalid to force that aggregator to do any kind of filtering, including on source. But then I think, John, you're saying is, nope, it's not too much. Am I, well, do I have that right? 
Yeah. So in that case, what what do people do today? They basically they they basically just put a dummy value where the source is the aggregator, right? As a new, I guess Clemens, you would call it a scope. Um, that that it's just its own scope, right? And so the fact that it's a complete mass and has you know everything in the kitchen sink in it, they don't like they don't really care because they're going to peel off or filter or whatever they're going to do to that fire hose. However, you know whatever magical thinking they use. Right, but the problem I think with that is this right here, right? Because if the subscriber puts a value in source, they're going to expect all events to match that value for the source. Right. And that's what I'm saying. It's a degenerate case. So if we're going to, if we're, if we're right. And, and like, I, like a bunch of enterprise developers, like I can totally picture hundreds of them that this, that's exactly how they think they don't care. They're not going to put it in unless they're forced to. Right. So it's a it's a willful choice and it's a degenerate choice, but it's a choice that people in practice actually make regularly. Right. But so so they do that like, OK, that's their problem. But why that particular degenerate use case, in my opinion, shouldn't shouldn't affect us as having a, um, a preference, a bias, a um, an opinion that that's actually not a good practice. But then are, are, so wait, are you advocating for this being optional? No. But if it's required, then okay, not, okay maybe I'm, maybe I'm still- No, no, so what, that's, what I'm, that's what I'm saying is like, if the, if the argument, and I'm putting words in your mouth, Eric, I don't know that you're actually saying this, <laughs> but if the argument, right, if the, the counter use case is, well, people do bad things and, and you know, degenerate things, and you know we we shouldn't require them to do good things like if if we go if we if we try and prohibit willful disregard it it doesn't work because people will just work around it right so like let's like let, let's we should bias or our opinionated position should be well here's the right thing to do and the right thing to do is what what you have written Right? It should match the, the actual cloud event source. Right? And if people choose to ignore it, then they're off the reservation anyway. I guess I'm, I guess I'm confused though. I think you're implying that this use case is a bad use case. Uh, the degenerate use case I'm saying is absolutely a bad practice. I'm just saying like we have to be like, we, if, if we're gonna take an opinionated stand People are going to do bad, broken, silly things, no matter what we require. I think that's a bad, to, being overly generic to bad practice is mm -hmm. not where we should, not what we should promote, right? So I'm, a, I'm saying it should be required. And if people hack their way around it, well, they're on their own anyway. Can you elaborate on why you think it's a why that proxy use case is a bad use case? Uh, if uh, what happens, right? You, when you have these big aggregators, right? So think about so again, my 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 personal experience is big enterprise, right? So big enterprise developer has some mandate comes down that says, oh, we have to interop with these other people. Everything goes through this generic proxy, and it's a huge fire hose. Yeah. Right. But instead of actually reading the documentation, figuring out these filter things because they're too complicated and whatever, they just say, I'm going to subscribe to everything. And then on my side, I'm going to I'm going to hack up some random filter to grab just what I want out of that fire hose. And since I'm just a developer and I'm not in ops, like I don't care about the performance. Right. So it's 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 all it ends up being ad hoc. And then ops pushes back later, like, why are you eating all this data? And they go, oh, you mean I can filter? And you go through this thing, and it takes two years to get the system cleaned up. Right? That's, that, that's the, <laughs> the, the shortest, laziest path to success so that they can claim victory and move on to their next, their next ticket. Okay. I apologize for belaboring this point, but maybe I'm thinking about this completely wrong because 
I, I wasn't thinking of this use case as being degenerate, bad, or anything like that. Rather, it's a valid use case in the sense that this aggregator wants all these events from all these event producers, and they want to allow people to subscribe to get the flood. And what they do with it down the line is, is up to them. And in that particular model, I it 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 seemed odd to me to say, hey, if, if I want to if I want to write a proxy subscription manager who is just doing nothing but sucking in events and then spitting them back out. I was wondering whether it's too big of a burden to say, yeah, that's great, you want to do that, but you know what? We're going to force you to do filtering. I, 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 don't, I don't have a valid use case other than it just seems like a natural thing that someone may say, hey, I want to write, I want to write a proxy subscription manager. And we're going to say, nope, sorry, you can't do that. You have to support filtering at least on source and well not type right and that's fine because they can make the source be that proxy but the, they can't the proxy, sure they can that's no. the, that's the source and they're going to dump everything through that but they but then it's not a proxy right because if they change the source value as it goes through the proxy then they're no longer a proxy well, so that, that, that now we're now we're getting to ownership and and who's who, right? Like I can tell you in 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 the in the in the the, the big enterprise that I have recent scars with, like that's literally how people thought, right? They didn't they 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 explicitly didn't want to like if they took this fire hose example where they're just saying hey we're a you know, we're some kind of operational or security system and we just want to see all the events that we're going to do, you know, some kind of uh, analysis on it. Like they, they, they're not going to, they're not going to filter on that anyway. Right. They're, they're, they're not, they're, they're just going to say, Hey, whatever comes in, we're going to ignore things like those source fields, except for in our actual analysis. Right, so they're doing their own downstream filtering or, or whatever you want to call it, like, and, and that's totally fine, right? That, but that's why I'm saying going back to if we if if we're going to take an opinionated stance, we we want to make the bias and the the mental model, right, which I I, I love thinking of. We want to we want to bias that to what good practice is, as opposed to the the um, the edge case. Okay, I, I need to think more about this. I, I don't know, Eric, I was way off where you were headed with this, but it, anyway. It was an interesting discussion. I definitely didn't mean the the, the degenerate case. I, I think there are some valid use cases, but I I, I, I worry about throwing the baby out with the bathwater um, if we disallow the, the degenerate. Anyway, I, I do have to drop though. Okay, thank I you, Eric. For, the discussion has been great. Yeah, thanks, Eric, for the discussion. I, I, good ideas, yeah. So Clemens, you came up with uh, that. Yeah, the, the, so, so um, I feel that same pain um, and, I, and I completely can follow it. And then also have the, um, including the, the enterprise developers are, what did you say, um, lazy bastards? Um, I would not make that as a generic statement about all my customers, but I've seen some of those. Um, and uh, that constraint is one where I would say that's an implementation policy decision um, that we should enable and make possible and any sane implementation will probably put, put some, some lid on that. Um, but the proxy case where you really want to have the ability to go and, 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 and pull through a fire hose for purposes of replication um, it is not an invalid one. So if I um, if I have this, if I'm using the subscription mechanism to say, I want to have a replica of this um, event store somewhere else and the way, and, and, and by creating a subscription, that's how I establish that, that relationship then I actually don't care about the sources and the 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 um, types at all, but I simply just want to go and set up a relationship between two two um, two uh, parts. 
So there, the subscription manager is the scope of that is you know implicitly everything that's 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 in that store. So it might not even care about the the source in in, in particular. Right. Um, right. If for for sorry to jump in, but in those kind of cases, for the legitimate case, right? I was trying to support Eric in the degenerate side, but on yeah. the for, for the for the valid side, right? If if we're going to say that, then to me, what that what that says is what what is a valid uh, thing to put in the source that actually ex makes explicit this view of no no i i literally want the fire hose on purpose for exactly the like you're like you're saying the replication use case for example mm -hmm. well that, that i think that value in that case would be leave source off as a subscriber yes right and, then, and i'm, and and I'm totally good. sorry go ahead clemens and, and then it's really up to the subscription manager which what what it what what the subscription manager gives you like you're no longer being specific in the subscription and then you are effectively in a world where you have a private relationship between the uh, the subscriber and the subscription manager to kind of sort out what what how the relationship of that subscription to the sources is. So 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 hold on on the because now we're talking about that's that goes under optional for client, right? But that mm -hmm. yes. to me, I worry. Like I one of my one of my checks is always being explicit versus implicit behavior mm -hmm. right and if we're if if we're saying this is a a non-trivial or uh, use case right that people explicitly want to be able to do it seems it, it seems like a better thing to actually make that explicit uh, as opposed to a degenerate uh, you know uh, the empty string has has a meaning and it's implementation defined versus saying I want the fire hose explicitly. That 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 communicates intent, right? And changes the view of when I'm looking at this subscription um, uh, payload. So, so John, I think that's that's a, that's almost a separate discussion, though, in the sense that <clears throat> I think that's more of a syntactical discussion, right? Are we gonna we, are we gonna allow source to be missing versus empty string, and what does those, each of those values mean? I, I, that's a valid discussion, but I think it's separate. Um, there is a, um, the, so there might be, there might, we might have a construct, um, that is the anonymous source. Like there's a, and then there I'm again, draw, drawing on some prior art, there is a construct yeah. in NQP called the anonymous terminus where, um, you are explicitly saying this is a generic. So this is a generic shoot, a generic channel, that where I am explicitly saying I actually don't care. I, I give up all my opinions about the content and about the addressing model that's inside of it, and I'm just allowing you to have a place in my broker. In, in the case of AQP, where you can go and send stuff to, and I'm changing. The the I'm making exceptions for for how we're going to do addressing um, in this case because it's really for the for proxy case and that's really for if you're building in computer routers for instance that's where the anonymous terminus is kind of kind of comes into play and I can see that we they explicitly say there is an, a concept of an anonymous source which means there is a special case URI of sorts um, or, or some 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 expression which says I am subscribing and explicitly say that I'm really making a proxy firehose subscription here for everything that the subscription manager has in scope. But so I, I still want to go back to, I think that's a separate discussion. Okay. Um, it's, it, it's syntactical around the source, yes. Yeah, so, but and I don't think that's what Eric is focusing on, okay? So John, I, I agree with you that we should have a discussion about how does someone indicate, I want everything. Right, whether it's absence of source or source with an asterisk or source with a well-defined URL, we can have that discussion. But I don't think that's what Eric was focused on. Okay, so let's assume for a minute <clears throat> you have a scenario where there is this aggregator firehose proxy thingy, okay? And someone can subscribe to it with whatever syntax that says, I want it all, okay? If we agree that that is a valid use case, then 
if this subscription manager says they are compliant with our specification, it is then valid for someone to come along as a subscriber to say, that's great, but you know what? I don't want it all. I want to subscribe to that, to that manager, but I'm going to put a source in my subscription request and I'm going to say github.com or something like that. Okay. We've now placed a burden on this proxy to filter events coming through its system to, to just github.com. Even though he, even though he, when, when the code is written, it may have been written with the assumption it's only going to do firehose and everything, you know, everything's going to go through it and everything's going to go to every subscriber. We've now placed a burden on them to support filtering in some fashion. And I think that's what Eric is concerned about. And I'm trying to figure out whether that's a valid concern or we want to say, no, tough. You have to at least support some level of filtering. So, so are you, are you ending up with basically the equivalent of HTTP content negotiation where you're saying, Hey, this is what I want. And the, the, a, a, resp a valid response is I don't support that. If, if we choose to make this optional, then yes, the discovery spec needs to have a flag in there that says for this uh, uh, subscriber that you're going to subscribe to, they, they either support it or they don't. And if they, if they say they don't support it <clears throat> and someone subscribes and they do specify a source, yes, I expect to get an error back saying, sorry, you, you asked for something I can't do. And, and to keep, keep in mind, I'm not saying whether this should be optional required. I'm just trying to play devil's advocate with Eric's position. Oh, Okay. <laughs> no, no, no. That, that's th th this kind of goes back to what, what what I what I started off a lot earlier is trying to figure out well what a, what a, what what is the bar or what is the what is the requirement versus what are we you know how 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 interoperable are we trying to be? Right. And I think I think there's two different levels of interoperability. Okay. There's interoperability from a more of a syntactical perspective, right? Do people understand and we have consistency on what it means for these values to appear in there and how they're going to be used and how people should use them and stuff like that. I think, I think we're all on the same page there. Okay. Then there's the different level. Then the other level of interoperability, which is, um, does everybody support what they need to support so that it actually becomes useful? And this goes back to, I think what Clemens and I have talked about in the past is, you know, in the WS star space, Sure, we had interoperability, but uh, from a spec perspective, but we had zero interoperability in reality when it came to the security specs because everybody implemented their own specification and this and the and the WS security spec said, eh, choose whatever dialect you want in essence, and 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 everybody chose their own. So you had zero interoperability in, in real world. That's right. right. Yeah. Yeah. I have exactly that worry. Yes, right? I, I have the same scars, so right. I totally agree on that being a problem. Right, and I and I think that's what I. That's what, so that's what I think we need to focus on here is to say, okay, if we change this from required to optional, have we now reinvented that pain point that WS Security had? Yes, because IBM implemented everything wrong. <laughs> yes, exactly. So yes. <laughs> yeah, I, 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 I'm crying on the inside, yeah. <laughs> right, so. And I don't know the answer, but to be honest with you, my gut reaction is that making this optional is not reintroducing that problem. Um, because I, I, I actually do think for some people, it may be a, a too high of a bar to say, hey, you need to at least be able to filter on type and source. Yeah. But I, I don't have a strong enough opinion or enough background to know for sure. It's just my gut feel is that those both should be optional. But I was willing to start out with them being required and revisit it. But since Eric forced the discussion, here we are. <laughs> well, so I, I, my gut says they need to be required, but it, it, like with content negotiation, if, if I don't support that as one of these aggregators, then th when you make the subscription attempt, I should respond with an error saying, you know, sorry, I don't support that. Right, so that it's explicit the whole way through, and there's an actual, you know, error response or whatever. Um, 
to to make that clear rather than having it just uh, well, you know, I'm going to send this subscription, hope it works, have a nice day. Well, no, I agree with you. If we, if we choose to make both these optional, yes, we have to have a very clear content negotiation, as you call it. Yes, totally agree. No, I, want... well, in that sense, I'm saying if we make it required and explicit, right, we can cover those cases and great. So it's required and the, but the, 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 the interoperability spec with the uh, aggregator still says, hey, it's required, but it's it's for me to be able to say, this is how far I support, right? So if we have various levels of filters or sophistication or whatever, it may not be just binary on or off. It, there, right? People may choose to do different levels of it or something yeah see that's 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 where i that's where i have to push back because <clears throat> i don't like the idea of discovery through errors right so if if you're if the spec says you shall support this then i think it'd be i think it's invalid from a spec perspective for someone to come back and say i recognized it but i'm not going to do it and therefore i'm going to error that's not supporting it to me yeah because because then all you're doing is you, you still don't have the level of interrupt that we were concerned about, right? We're just changing when you find out you don't have interrupt, right? Was it at discovery time or at runtime? You know, one, one might be better than the other, but you're still stuck with the problem of you don't have interrupt that we're concerned about. Yeah, I see. Right. So, so it... it and then, so, but, but John, so if, if, if you actually are okay with the idea of a subscription manager not being forced to support filtering, then I think your, your position has to be there optional. No, my, well, my personal opinion is it, it should support source based filtering as the minimum, right? Whether it supports more sophisticated filtering is a is a is to be a separate thing. Understood. Yeah, I phrased it wrong. Yes. Yeah. It, yes. Right. But so it, so in my in, in in my in my thing, because of my 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 uh, fear of implicitness, right? I would say it needs to support source uh, filtering on an exact you know whatever that prefix pattern or URI pattern, whatever, whatever that level, and we should make that level be, be realistic, but it should be, it should be required. Otherwise the degenerate case is always going to be, it's a fire hose. Have a nice day. Okay. I'd like to hear from and I think that else. leads to the W star problem, right? If the degenerate case is, if there is no bar <laughs> other than here's the fire hose, People will 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 uh, will will uh, sink to the common denominator. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not convinced that's necessarily a degenerate or a bad case, but I understand where you're coming from. But I'd like to hear from other people on the call whether anybody else has any opinion on this. I do. Not that you've ever spoken up before, but sure, go ahead, Clemens. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, um, I, the, the, so I understand what the degenerate case is. Um, it's just that I don't, so from an interoperability perspective, um, so I can't see how this is a problem for implementations uh, or, or in, use it while using an implementation that you haven't that you have an overly um, scoped um, uh, fire hose of data, and that's that's everything that 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 customers um, uh, um, ask for. But what we're saying here is that it's required for the manager to understand the notion of source, which means we're talking about here. It is if you give it a constraint, then the the manager ought to ought to uh, um, respect it which is which is for constraining and i don't think we're saying we're saying that you can that you can always get an unconstrained feed 
from a subscription manager. Like, like if you are, if you're providing, if you're not providing any source, any source here, then it's really up to the subscription manager to decide which kind, which kind of feed it gives you. That is, so, so you're making, you make, you're making a choice for constraining. But then if you are choosing not to constrain here, which means you're not specific in, in what events you want, <clears throat> then it's really the, the manager that will go and, and, and decide it. And if, and if the manager can tell what you want, uh, but if you're omitting the source, then that's probably an error. You lost me in terms of what you're advocating for. Mm -hmm. Are you are you advocating that it stays required or that it should be optional? I think I think that I think the manager needs to. Um, I think the manager needs to understand it. Okay, so required for the manager is what you're saying. Yeah, the manager needs. If you if you if you if you if you set the source, then the manager needs to understand. It needs to process it, but it can reject it. It's not, I mean, you can go and have a nonsense source and that, but it needs to be able to go and, and, and reason about it. Yeah, yeah, I, I agree with you that I think it should be allowed to say, hey, the source string you gave me is invalid, but it has, there yeah. has to be at least some valid string that it would accept. Yes, I, yeah. Yeah. okay, okay. So, okay, so I think as of right, I, 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 uh, why don't we do this? Why don't we keep it as required for now and we can continue the discussion through issues or something else or just or the next time. Um, but at least now I feel like I understand Eric's concern and use cases better. At least I think I do. Um, but I think we need to get more feedback because I have a very strong suspicion, suspicion that uh, Remy may push back on this because I think he's doing the exact degenerate case that we're talking about here. But let, let's, let's hold off. Um, now, as we were talking though, it dawned on me in the case of GitHub, the GitHub may actually have it be have, have source be required field, right? It's going to need to know which GitHub repo you want events from. And I think this may go directly to what you were saying, Clemens, about being able to error on bad strings in there. Um, I, I'm assuming it's valid for the subscription manager to error saying source is actually required, even though the yeah. spec allows it to be optional from the sender's point of view, a particular subscription manager can say, nope, you have to send me this. Yeah. Okay. If that's true, do we need a mechanism in the spec for someone to advertise that it's required? Or is that just something that they read through documentation? Um, trial and error. We, we could, since we, have a, since we have a metadata, we have a metadata service that describes the subscription managers. So we can probably put a flag there. I know we can. I'm just wondering whether we should. Because um, conceptually, I could say, hey, that's a neat idea. But at the same time, I also don't want to bloat our discovery spec. Right? Um, the source, well, we have a field that is about the source pattern, right? Yes, but that, that we discussed. Yeah, but that that's not the same thing as saying it's required. It just says, hey, if you give me a value, it has to look like this. I'm not sure that we need to have that expressed dynamically because I mean, you, because you need to get the value from somewhere. It's not that you show up and, and, and I think that's context that you, that you need to have. Like you're not gonna, you're not gonna provide you're not going to provide it or not provide it based on some metadata discovery or 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 um, some some dynamic value that you're getting back. Okay. Does anybody I think that's a compile time problem? <laughs> well, if we're gonna, that, so that goes back to my thing to just make it explicit, right? So if we if we change it to if the manager side is required, and you say, well, the client side is required, but you can put the star or whatever the the magic incantation for give me everything or whatever I'm allowed to see or whatever that is written as, then it's explicit on both sides and you don't have any negotiation or, or uh, anything. You just have the, I support that or I don't, uh, or, you know, it's bad, badly formed or whatever. 
That is interesting. I hadn't thought about that. Basically, it's, it's required <laughs> for the client. It's right. just we have a special value. Right. Yeah. Branchless cloud for the wind. Yeah, interesting. What do people think about that? My, my only concern with that is whatever value we choose to indicate, I want it all. Do we run the risk of it overlapping with a valid value? Well, I guess not. It's, well, if source is a URI, asterisk is a valid URI, isn't it? Or at least relative URI? Uh, uh, yes. Yeah. Yeah, that, that, I mean, we, didn't we pass that uh, um, rail station already on this? <laughs> no, my, my, my point is, are we allowed to hijack it, right? Or can an event producer actually produce an event that has a source with a value of star? And now we've, we've removed the ability for someone to say, I actually want this yeah, that's, from that one person. Yeah, what I, what I meant was we had this, uh, I, um, yeah, I think that's, that's the thought that I expressed earlier with, having a special catch-all or anonymous um, source. Yeah, we'd probably make it, we'd have probably to make it under the cloud events URI. Scott, Scott is already starting a naming discussion of star. <laughs> okay. It's, it's the only thing that fails parsing for relative URIs. Can we right. make it a shruggy? A what? A, a shruggy uh, emoji. A shruggy, oh, no. <laughs> Oh gosh! <laughs> hey, it's a simple string comparison. Come on. It is. No, 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 no. Actually, now you're breaking into jail on UTF encodings. <laughs> that is not funny because because that's... I retract. I, I I stipulate. I retract. Okay, good. Because that is very difficult for Doc to express on his EPSIDIC systems. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> okay. I t um, okay. Tell you what. I think. Okay. Let's let's do this. Let's 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 pick up next week on whether it's optional versus required with a with a catch all string. Um, but for right now, we're going to keep it as required until we hear more use cases. Um, actually, next week. Okay, I would like at least a three minute break before the, my next phone call at the top of the hour. Are there, is, the, is everybody okay with, the, with this being a good stopping point since we only have four, five minutes left? Okay. Please let it end. <laughs> <laughs> we'll be back here again next week, don't forget. Um, oh, yeah. Actually, oh. what, I was, what I was gonna do is I was gonna take this example and rework it based upon the decisions we made today because I think a lot of things actually drop by the wayside. And relative to this example, we may not need the full time, but I also don't want to assume that this use case that I put forward is the only one we want to discuss. So um, I'll try to, before the end of the week, revamp this thing, and then maybe put it out there for us to decide either through Slack or email, whether we want to continue the three hour discussion or whether this is it. I, I, I have the sense that there's more to discuss here. I just don't know what they are right now. Um, but I'd love to hear your guys' feedback in the last minute or so. Do you guys feel like we have more to discuss? I can't, you can't stay silent on this. Because <laughs> three hours is a big ask of the group. Klaus, you keep coming off mute. Yep. David. <laughs> I just, I mean, here it's, it's 8 p.m. and I, I think I really have to think about this until <laughs> next week. Okay. Okay, well, tell you what, we'll, we'll assume we're gonna go three hours again next week. And if, if for some reason we end up stopping early, that's fine, you know, we can stop after five minutes and, and for the first hour, then jump back on for the second hour and not even talk for the third hour. And then we'll, we'll cancel the three hours going forward. I, I just punted on my following meeting because my brain is now fried. <laughs> okay. Anyway, thank you all for joining for the three hours. I personally, I thought this was great. I love these brainstorming sessions and I do think we ended up at a, at a much better spot. Yeah, so do I. And I'll, I'll, I'll take the action to start writing up some of this stuff either by just updating this document or actually through PRs and stuff. We'll see how I feel. But I do think we made forward progress. All right. So thank you all for joining. We'll talk again next week. Thank you. Bye. Bye everybody. You. Bye. Thanks. Cheers.